Cool. Oh! My headphones. Mr. Pig the Great. What is up? Gosh. Uh, I want to get back to this point, right? Except with not trash code and it, where it's actually workable and we could add more content and add game modes and whatnot. This thing would be so popular and it would be like a real competitor to like something like Call of Duty or whatever. Okay. So today go over yeah whatever you're in school lunch oh well hmm oof let's see here how do I actually who's up this is just this uh... cool and I've sent myself the stream link um, cool. Now I have access to that. All right. Yeah. I think, uh, I think what we're going to do is try to make like a mass stabilizer or something. I'm mean, kind of thinking about it. And the idea is that if we have an animation that plays, let's say this is the lower body or the upper body, and this is the lower body and the lower body twists. Like the lower body like doesn't really twist much at all and the upper body twists like this in order to stabilize this motion we actually want to twist back the whole thing just a little bit right because you can't create right so like imagine you're an astronaut in space right you can't if you're like spinning you can't stop spinning whoa if you're spinning you can't stop spinning because uh, you have some like angular momentum. And so what we want to do is try to, right? Well, we're not coding that much, right? We're just trying to make some, um, we're just trying to stabilize the stuff, right? And so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're just trying to stabilize this. Oh shoot, I might actually have to use the bathroom, which is kind of funny. Okay. Um, hmm. And so how I think we're going to do this is if we have like the center mass here in one frame and then in the next frame we it looks like this we can say that this thing has undergone 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 a translation from here to here right with respect to the center of mass and so we can say, that, um, so I think what we can do is we can look at this offset vector, which really should be in red and this offset vector and say, okay, well, what was the angular momentum change or the angular position change, I guess. And we can say, cool, yeah, so I guess we could say this is R0 and R1, or maybe position 0, position 1 or something. I guess we'll call it R, right, because it's not a world position. And I think we can say that, okay, so momentum equals, okay, well, let's start with, with, with uh, moment, like more normal momentum. So that momentum is capital P equals mass times velocity. 
if instead we do mass times velocity times a delta time, right, let's do times t, we get, so times time times momentum, we get an impulse, I think, right? Impulse is like a change in momentum, right? So, yeah. And so I think we can actually do the same thing, right? And so this is the same as saying like mass times position one minus position zero. And so I actually think that we can say J, which is angular momentum equals, well, angular momentum, which is capital L equals mass times velocity uh, no cross the radius cross velocity <clears throat> and if we multiply that by time we'll say this is how you write j how do you write j oh my gosh I don't know how to write I think j is like that. Okay, equals time times mass times this cross velocity. Uh, and r, no, v equals r1 minus r0. Uh, or t times c times times velocity equals r1 minus r0. So j equals mass times r0 or 1, it doesn't matter, let's just do r0 cross, don't know why I wrote a parenthesis here. r0 cross r1 minus r0. And actually the nice thing is that the R zero here, anything cross itself is zero. So it looks like angular impulse equals mass times R zero cross R one. So that looks pretty nice. So now we have a Now we have a, a formula for this, but this is with respect to the center of mass. So F O R mation linear transformation with respect to with respect to center of mass. Okay, so good morning, good afternoon. Oh yeah, I guess it is uh, good afternoon. What's up? Okay, actually, how do you pronounce your name? Is it Chipio or is it Chipio? Because I'm I'm thinking Chipio, but Io is like in out, like it's a common thing. So let's uh yeah yeah yeah. So let's see linear transformation. Um, what do I want? Oh, that selection B for brush. Okay, so I think what we want, okay, we also, so this is like for a like linear transformation with respect to center of mass of a point mass. Yeah, that's it. Point mass. Okay, and then we could also like rederive this. We could integrate over all starting positions and ending positions in order to get this, but I think it'd be more accurate for us to say if we do a rotating part, right, that goes from this to this, right, so it's undergone a 45 degree turn in this case. 
about its center of mass. Um, we know that the moment of inertia, oh darn. Okay, impulse and moment of inertia have the same name. Crap, okay, moment of inertia. So this is like angular mass, right? So we dot it with uh, our I mean, we've undergone a transformation, like a rotation. This this rotation is some time times omega, right? So where, where omega is like an angular change. And this gives us like the momentum of the angular change or something. I mean, this is like the momentum equivalent angular. Mm, this gives, oh, this actually gives us the angular impulse, right? So this is J equals this guy here. And um, right, and so this is actually just I times uh, like a delta rotator, right? So uh, whatever this is, this is like, I'm gonna have to make up a name for this. I guess it'll be capital R. All right, and actually, I gotta use a bathroom. Oh, hey, what's up? Wait, blocks. Wait, what the hell? Blocks. <laughs> what? Oh, hello. Um, also, yeah, uh, bathroom needs are, yeah, two people watching, I guess there's three people watching, right? So anyway, bathroom needs are actually distracting me from the thing at hand. Um, I had like a lot of water and coffee earlier, so I will be right back. Yeah.
and I'm back. What, I need more attention? Do I need more attention? Am I able to make scripting tutorials? Yeah, maybe I could. It's just like a lot of effort. Um, like explaining things is kind of hard. Chipio, Chipio. Okay, cool. That's what I thought. Okay, no more bathroom. I reckon. Actually, I'll probably need that again. I'll just leave that up. Um. Yeah, 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 yeah. What was I doing here? Right, right. Instead of R, I'd do like delta R or something, or maybe delta A. Um, okay, it'll be like A or something. Oh, excuse me. This is probably actually an awful idea. I mean, this is like an axis angle rotation. I don't know, delta R, sure. Yeah, okay, so what's the important stuff? Okay, so this is important. And this one's important. What do you care? Oh, I'm not teaching. I'm just working on stuff. <laughs> um, I'm actually just, I'm actually explaining to myself what I'm, what I'm working on, right? Cause I need to like lay out some ideas I've been having and I'm just like verifying stuff I've thought about, but like this makes sense to me, right? I mean, this is like so elegant that it has to be true. And then, and then this one is so elegant, it has to be true as well. Well, except hold on. So, okay, but this only works if it's in, um, local space, right? So this has to be in local space in object space. Because, um, this is the object space angular mass, right? And so people, okay. And so um, so the question is, do I care about object space or do I care about mm, world space? Right. And I think, well, it might not matter. So this isn't world space. But eventually I'm going to have to get this into world space. So I think I might as well translate this into world space real quick. So let's actually go ahead and nope out of this thing here. Yeah, because this is actually wrong. Okay. And so here's what we're going to say. We're going to do in blue, I guess. Or no. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we'll, we'll actually just leave this. Right. And then we'll say, we'll move this over. So. Um, we're we going to do this, I guess, right here. So J equals, what was this important one? M times R zero cross R one mass times R zero cross R one. And then I guess we'll write the other important one, but this one is wrong. Okay. And we'll write this one J equals, well, we need to transform the inertia matrix, moment of inertia matrix into world space. And in order to do that, we need the current world space orientation, which will be R. Okay, let's actually do it in object space first. Okay, so we have, we'll, we'll transform this into world space 
after the fact. I think it can be done by just doing Okay, well, let's see, what's, okay, we're going from R0 to R1. Okay, so there's two ways we can do this. I guess we should, let's, okay, there's two ways we could, we could, we could do it in the reference space of the previous frame or the current frame. Hey, what's up? I went to Harvard, what? Your algebra. I totally understand the. <laughs> I went to Harvard. I I did not go to Harvard. I dropped out of college. Um, let's do uh, rotation. Okay, we'll do. We have to to convert this to the axis angle somehow, and so I'll just write like um. I don't know what the, I don't know what I'm going to call the two axis angle function, I guess maybe a, right? So a of r1, uh, no, r0 inverse times r1. And that's the change that gets us from r0 to r1. And so It might actually not matter which space we multiply this in, which is pretty cool. Um, okay, and then we actually need to multiply this out of either R0 or R1. So we could do R0 here, or we could do R1, right? Let's do R1 because it's the most recent frame. There's another way I can think to do this, and that would be if we transformed I into world space, right? So we did, and there's actually two ways, right? So we could also do R zero times the inertia matrix dotted with the axis angle of R zero inverse times R one. The other way I could think to do this is first we convert this into object space or into world space by doing R1 times inertia matrix times R1 inverse times um, well we want to get this into world space so this would actually turn out to be the same thing right so R1 times the axis angle of R0 inverse R1. And actually the thing is, is that we can get the world space rotation by doing, so we could do, so this these cancel out, right? But we could also do R1 times I, so this converts it to world space times R1 inverse times the axis angle of R1 times r0 inverse. And so this would get it into world space. So we have the world space axis angle change, and then we convert this into world space. And so this, I think, is actually kind of a bit cleaner of a formula because we're, we're doing two conceptual things here. So we're converting the moment of inertia matrix into world space, and we're doing um, like, the, like the world space delta axis angle. Whereas up here, we're doing we're getting the axis angle in local space. We're doing multiplied by the mass and then we're transforming into world space. So I think I might actually prefer this one. Preference. Even though it takes more work. Um, and actually if I, if I work with this in terms of quaternions, it might get very simple. And so I could try doing that, right? So let's see here. <clears throat> um, yeah, do I pretend needs? 
Okay, and then we'll do quaternion. Okay, quaternion to axis angle is incredibly simple. So we'll go ahead and do R W R X R Y R Z just to get that out of the way. Oh, actually, you know what? It needs to be R1. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. And this two axis angle conversion on quaternions is very simple. So let's go ahead and. Yeah, how's it going? Okay, so. Wow, I had like a lot of concurrent viewers for a little bit. But this is like pretty math heavy, so. I understand why like not a lot of people stick around. Zero, W. No, x, 0, y, 0, z, 0. And then we just need a copy of this, except where it's 1. So that's the initial position, the afterwards position. And I actually, I wonder if, I wonder if, if I replace these with 0, if this ends up giving me the same thing. And I wonder if this turns into something like really simple. Yeah, anyway, if y'all have like questions or something. Also, maybe I'm just not seeing the... Um, uh, do I... Do you pay for Wolfram? Yeah, I pay for Wolfram. Um, actually, I, I have the option to pay again for more service, right? For updates and whatever. But... Um, Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's expensive, right? It's like $3,000 or something. So I should probably, should probably like pay for that again. <laughs> Here. Here guys, you should appreciate this real quick. I'll leave that up for just a little bit. If you're not looking at this room, you should look at the stream. Three, two, one. Incredible meme. Okay, let's go back to the task at hand. So I think we could, yeah, I think we could replace this with zeros, right? But I would like to verify this because if I can replace this with either one, then maybe I could just cancel stuff out in the first place. Right, but like, I mean, maybe not, you know, who knows. But like, the nice thing with, um, the nice thing with this formula is that, like, look at how it doesn't care at all about the first and the second one, where like, there's no, there's no multiple way, there's, it's unambiguously one way to define this function, whereas this rotation one seems to have like several different ways to define it. And this one, Right, so this one could be a zero as well. Here, let's see. And how do I transform this matrix by quaternion? Okay, so I mean, I just need to do each. Um, for, are you talking about this? Yeah, this, these are, um, These are models for VR chat, right? So I've been looking at VR chat models. Look at this one. Yeah, anyway. So yeah, I can take, uh, oh my God, what was I doing? Actually, it might be simpler to try this one first because um, this can be simplified into a matrix times an axis angle and then multiplied by a quaternion. And quaternion times this is simpler than this. Okay, so actually, let's look at this, right? So there's like three different axes that need to be multiplied out of this matrix. So let's look at the X one. 
And in order to transform it by this rotation, we would need to do Let's say that Q is the quaternion representation of this rotation. So let's do, Q. so in order to do this, we do Q, let's just write Q times Q inverse. And then in order to do this one, right, we can't multiply on the right way. Or I think I figured out how to do it, but it's like a big pain in the butt. It like takes a big matrix thing to do it. So I'm actually, actually, I'm kind of interested. Uh, maybe I should actually work on this problem of how to transform on the right side by a quaternion, right? So I mean, I guess I could try converting the quaternion to a matrix and then converting back, like finding the pattern. But um, anyway, also, if y'all have like questions or something, feel free to ask. Motion stabilizer. So the motion stabilizer is like when you're running or whatever. Um, notice how your when your let when your left leg goes forward, your right arm goes forward and your left arm goes back, right? And your right leg goes back. And so anyway, there's this twisting motion in the bottom side, under in the bottom of the body, and the opposite twisting motion in the top of the body. And so anyway, what I'd like to do is see if I can stabilize that at all. Right, and so maybe, so I can just run my animations, but have it like, what if somebody's just floating in space or something? And then I can like apply a spring force to try to, so that way the, the that way the mass is like the, like the center of mass and the angular center of mass are smoothed, if that makes sense. It might look, uh, might look better that way. Yeah, actually, I'm really interested in this problem now of like, we have a vector and we want to multiply on the right by quaternion. Um, and actually, that only works if we have a matrix. So, I mean, like, it'd be pretty easy, right? So we just take the matrix and we convert from a quaternion to rotation and then we convert. I mean, that would still be a matrix, right? But then we just take like the x component. So. We just take the x component of this, and that would be the same as, or something, right? Um, but I don't know if this can be, I don't know if we can represent this in terms of quaternion, right? Let's actually just, yeah, I'm going to finish this stuff. Yeah, so why don't we actually just, what is this, notifications? Yeah, so let's see. What are we looking at? Um, right multiplication of vector with quaternion. Oh, maybe we could just go to Wikipedia. Like, let's see, does Wikipedia have an, have an answer for us that I can understand? Oh my lord. Brower group, okay. Um, it's the even part, okay, I don't know what that is. Quaternion algebra. Algebra, the quaternions can be generalized further into algebra called quaternion. Okay, well, I don't think I care about that actually. If we give a lot, okay, sure. Oh, interesting. Four square theorem. Okay. Wait a second. What is this matrix representations? Okay. <gasps> what? There's like, there's gotta be like four of these or something. There's gotta be like at least four of these, right? That's 
That's pretty cool, but that's not what I care about. Yeah, it looks like this doesn't have the answer to what I wanted. So let's just do, okay, so, so like a quaternion to, I mean, converting a, a quaternion to a rotation matrix would just do this thing, whoops. Q times uh, like our vector, right? Dot. Wait a wait a second. Oh yeah, yeah, right. This is like left multiplication, right? So multiplying the quaternion on the left. So this, okay. So like to be more explicit, this is like converting to a quaternion, right? Where the real component is zero. And then we get the imaginary component as the vector, right? And then we do Q inverse, and then we convert back to our vector space, right? All right, so we just do like the imaginary part, right? And so, um, right, this could, this could also be represented as V dot I J, K, right, so this, these are the same. Where is, there, okay. Do you have a job outside of being real? No. Property, people say that Wikipedia is an unreliable source when Wikipedia is created in the same way. Fifty sources to verify information in a single statement. Yeah, I don't know. Wikipedia is like really opaque though, right? As far as math is concerned, it's like really hard to actually use Wikipedia to get anything done. Or to like actually learn things if you don't already have like a really good idea of everything. So like essentially the concepts that I'm playing with are I think at a very high level, but my understanding of a lot of the blocks beneath it that are in standard come beneath it is like not very good. And it's not that I don't like there's a lot of notation as well that I don't really understand. Like, I don't really know. Like I understand the basics. <sighs> okay, so that's that is. This is left multiplication. This is Q times V. Is this right? But V times Q. There's like a different thing. All right. Okay, looks like we're gonna do this one on top instead. Okay. We could also do like the R zero one. I, yeah, I'd like to see if I can get rid of, I'd well, like see if I can move this somewhere where it gets rid of any, um, yeah, yeah, and let's see, why did I verify this again? Okay, so we transformed this into world space, and then we transform this to world space, and then multiply them together, and these cancel out. So we're left with a matrix times an axis angle, and then multiplied by a quaternion, which is um, x x x y x z x y y y z z x z y z z. Right, and I'll just put i's or something here. Yeah, okay, so now we're multiplying this. And actually, this is like a symmetric matrix, so I could put I, X, Y here, and I, Y, Z here, and I, Z, X here. I guess I could do that. I mean, it doesn't, I don't think it'll actually simplify anything. It's probably not worth. Okay, I'll just leave it out there. And then we get the axis single formula, so can, to convert from from quaternion to axis angle, it's pretty simple, right? And so all you have to do So yeah, 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 yeah. So all we gotta do is just take the um uh 
yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll just do this, right? So this is like the relative, sorry, R for relative, I guess. And then um, or maybe I should call it D for delta or something. So we take this delta and we say, okay, well, this is the axis of rotation. And then we divide by the square root of this dotted with itself, right? So we unitize it. And then we multiply by the arc cosine of this and then multiply by two, right? And so this will get us the, the axis angle representation. And yes, and actually we could do, so this is actually gonna be equal to the I don't know if this will actually make it simpler or not, but the arc sine of this, and so actually we could do arc cosine divided by arc sine, right? And I don't know if this is, yeah, okay, that didn't make it any simpler. Okay. Yeah, okay, so this is how we get the axis angle. There might be like a simpler way to think about this, where we just do... Like, what does this approximate to, right? And so the cosine is going to be changing much less. Uh, wait, hold on. Our cosine of this. So this is going to be linearly changing. And so actually it's approximately equal to... Um, okay, so dw is approximately equal to 1 minus... t squared, right? Let's actually just say cosine. Let's actually just take this and say, because I wonder if we could get rid of this like arc cosine stuff and make this really pretty, right? I mean, this is iterated anyway. But like anything, it's a nice place to start to understand. Yeah, I, I, I totally disagree with this. I think it's like um, if you want it to teach underlying information, like if you want it to be a nice place to start, it should also teach the underlying information, right? And so I think that, uh, like I think Wikipedia is actually like pretty awful for learning math, um, unless you're doing like really traditional ground up stuff, which is definitely not what I do. Let's see, so DW is like cosine of T and then actually dx, dy, dz, um, this, so dx would go to like x times sine of t, oops, that's dx, right? And then we'll just repeat this a couple times. Yeah, so y and y and z and z. And we assume that x squared, y squared, z squared is one. And so what this ends up turning into is the square root. Okay, we can pull the sine t out, right? And this just becomes one. And this is also just sine t. I'm pretty sure it's gonna like super simplify down, right? So this just becomes, yeah, so this times t Right, so this is also times t. Yeah, and so the thing is that x times t, well, t is approximately sine of t. And we said that this was, this is approximately sine of t for small angles. And, and then we say that x times sine of t 
is just dx. Okay, so this is what I thought. Okay, so dx, dy, dz. And so actually we don't, um, because it's like for small angles, we don't really even need to do the arc cosine stuff. So we could probably just say, right, we could do this, but we could also just as well do this instead. So these are both fine, right? This is like more accurate, but this is like really elegant. So anyway, we, have, we got to multiply this by the, and this might actually let us simplify some stuff out. And, um, right, and so this is actually the same as just doing, uh, right, so this one inversed. Right, this one inverse, well, that's pretty simple times this one, right? And then we get the relative one. And then we can just go ahead and say that this is the x, y, z. And this of course assumes that everything is a unit, but like we're making a shitload of assumptions here for simplicity's sake. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so this is pretty nice. And then we need to go ahead and Wait, and hold on, so this actually turns, okay, this would be two times that, but, okay. No, not fuck you, F-U-L-L, simplify. Okay, same difference. That yeah, didn't make a difference. Okay, and then we can take this, and then we actually need to, oops. We need to multiply this guy, right, so we need to take this guy and then we still need to transform it. Okay, so we have the local space, okay, the local space axis angle, and this needs to be able to multiply by two. So we have the local space axis angle times the local space this and then we need to translate it into world space and we can do that by doing this guy uh, times well this actually needs to be this actually needs to be a quaternion -y thingy and so where the first argument is zero. Okay, but what if we didn't have the first argument as zero? What if we had the first argument here as just the resulting W component? And then how would we get what's the conversation yeah the explanations are good yeah pipelines and matrices interesting so I built a 3d engine too um, but I actually didn't reference anything be good for getting high level understanding. Um, I mean, I didn't reference any of the math, right? So I just kind of derived it. It's good to get a basic understanding. Yeah, I don't know. Wikipedia just confuses me. I find it easier to just, I mean, I find it easier to just do this, right? So, and then like, and not only that, but by doing the this way, I, I have to explore the entire space including wrong and right ideas. And by doing that, um, I think it makes things easier in the long run. Cause I feel like I have a much more in-depth understanding of things than like, probably like 99.9999, uh, probably like 99.99% of people, maybe more. I'm probably like one in a hundred thousand or so.
Um, so let's see, we're turning in W0. Yeah, 100,000 is a lot of people. I'm probably like, okay, so if I go to a university, then I'm probably like one in a thousand or something, right? But the, um, but that's like, like a highly concentrated. Maybe one, maybe I'm one in 10,000 as far as this, like knowledge of this is considered. Somewhere between one in 10,000 and one in 100,000. And anyway, I definitely like, Wikipedia has not <laughs> assisted in that. Um, yeah, so here we go. So now we just transform it by this guy here. No, I didn't mean to write an eight. This is where I fuck up, right? I like, I write stuff like that. And of course, if I simplify this, the W component will go to zero. Okay, and that's like a big, Okay, well, we're getting some like dot producty looking things out of this. This looks like pretty standard stuff. But if I did full simplify, please just simplify it for me. Like Mathematica also is like a huge help because it like does all this algebra for me. I just want to see if it like simplifies down into like a nice little formula or something, which it appears like it's not going to, but it would be nice if it would. No, yeah, I'd say Wikipedia is incredibly reliable. Um, I just, my autistic mind just can't wrap my head around actually using it. W, X, Y, Z, da, 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 da. Yeah, this looks pretty reasonable. Um, I wonder, I mean, there really should be no, hmm. Yeah, I guess this should be good enough, right? Like, I mean, at this point, I just have the moment of inertia matrix and whatever, and I go at it. I mean, the other option is that I could actually take the, um, I could actually just take this formula here and derive uh, like a custom formula for this changing stuff. And it would also work for, um, for like changing of size and stuff too, but it wouldn't technically be as physically accurate, but you know what, why don't we just do that real quick? So that way we don't even have to work with the moment of inertia. Let's just do it for like a box real quick. So we have, um, okay, so R0 and R1 are with respect to a center of mass. And so we need the first matrix and the second matrix with respect to a center of mass. And I'm assuming this is in world space. Um, and like these can change size as well. So yeah, so yeah, let's just see what that looks like, right? So here we have our, well, right, we're not doing a moment of inertia matrix. We're gonna do, Yeah, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do uh, quaternion. Cut a little thing. Um, we're gonna do, we're gonna do what we're gonna do. We're gonna do quaternion zero, quaternion one, and we'll do like the difference from the center of mass. So like we'll have R's in there as well. And so I guess what we'll, actually do we'll just write we'll just we'll just call it a and b right why not 
uh, or we could do R0 and R1, whatever. Okay. And then we also have like a position as well. And the position is an offset. So we go from the center of mass offset by the position. So we multiply um, we'll just call this like x, y, z, or i, j, k or something. Oh, zero. And then we'll multiply by, oh crap, did I start by multiplying by the inverse? Okay, it doesn't matter. No, I multiply by the inverse afterwards, because that's correct. And then we'll do this one here, and we'll do negation. Oh. So we we're multiplying by the inverse. Okay, now we have this thing, and let's simplify this just to, like, I don't know why we're simplifying it. I just do that because it's low effort. Okay, and so now we have this. <laughs> Interesting. I wonder if I could actually just Let's just collect, let's just collect IJK, right? Just cause, yeah, okay, that is nice. And so now we can say, well now we need to add, whoops, now we need to add, um, yeah, is anybody actually talking? Oh, hello. Deferred love, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where did the spring equation come from? Yeah, so that actually came from the idea. So I came up with that idea. I didn't know it was called a spring when I came up with it, I, if I remember correctly. But, and uh, like, so I learned about this idea called differential equations and I was like, oh cool, I could probably write something that tries to get something to go towards an object. And I think what I did was I said F double prime T. So the acceleration should go towards the thing. So this is the acceleration of, of like, so F is the position, F prime is the velocity and F double prime is the acceleration. I should say, okay, well, we should accelerate a point towards a target. And so we can say, well, how hard do we want it to accelerate? Let's do like A, right, for like we're just choosing a, a like a variable times the target, right? So the the difference minus the current position, and then we do well. We we don't want it to like overshoot, so let's like subtract b times the current velocity or something. That's f of t. And uh, this took me a long time to come to, and then eventually. So actually, I just had Mathematica solve this, so that was really nice of Mathematica to do that. And if we actually just solve this or have Mathematica solve this with respect to that. Right, so we get this guy. And I was like, wow, this is kind of complicated. Maybe, um, and later I actually went to college and I took like a differential equations course and I figured out how to actually solve this. And turns out you can get some really nice formulas um, if you like, if you, but before I did that, uh, before I took the class, I was like, okay, well, I wonder if we can like, simplify this thing out, and I don't really remember exactly what I did, but I think I said uh, we want this to be like zero or something. And I think I did like this. So I said, okay, well, A is just now this. Um, right, but we actually need more. So like this should be the standard one, or maybe I did like this should be the standard one. Wait, no, that should be two. Oops. And um, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I was like, okay, well, that's really simple. Let's make that the standard one. And then let's add like a term here called this, right? And so this like simplified it out nicely. And we got like just B times D minus um, the square root of uh, like D squared minus one or one minus D squared. So that's how that came about, right? So I was literally just looking for making this as simple as possible. And that's how I came up with the version of the springs that are very common in Roblox today. Um, turns out it's pretty nice. Have go to C frame. Is it code language? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. The language is, it's excellent. 
right? So this is called Mathematica and it's pretty great. Um, how did I get so good at C-Frame? I don't know, I thought about it a lot. Yeah, so I just like thought about it really hard for a long time. I think that's how you get good at most things. Um, okay, and so we have this also this offset, so x zero, y zero, z zero. Uh huh. And so this is like the position inside of our block, right? So what we're doing right now is we're saying, okay, we have a block that was here and the center of mass is, was there. And now we have a block over here and the center of mass is still here. And so this is x0, y0, z0. This is x1, y1, z1. And the rotation, quaternion, that's um, big X, uh, or sorry, big W, big X, big Y, big Z. Right, and same for down here, right? So I'm, I'm differentiating between quaternion and, and position. So the capital means quaternion and the lowercase means position. And okay, and so here's the idea, right? So this equation we came up with earlier, where did it go? Oh, you wanna see something? Yeah, this is VR chat's a fun time. We had a there was a glitch here. Check this out. <laughs> Whenever I sat down, my face went under my legs, which is really funny. And so you can see the it's all glitched out. Oh, and also I got a I ordered a Vive. It's coming in tomorrow. Yeah, uh, not a Vive. I ordered a, a Valve Index. Sorry. Um, sorry, Vive is like old at this point. Okay, so we have this, and actually the formula says that we can do mass, right? Or at this point, this would be density, right? Because it's mass times uh, like our delta, right? And so we have mass times R0 cross R1. And so this is R0, and then R1 would just be where we replace all of these um, x0, y0, z0, w0, x0, y0, z0. And these just go to their equivalent. And I'm actually gonna do this in Sublime Text real fast, because Sublime Text is like, oh, that's rich test. No, I don't wanna save that. Hmm. Also, this is the secret, I think, to making a good animation system. Get tightly integrated with Roblox. Okay. Oh, I could have just selected the zeros. Look at that. Let's change these to one. Beautiful. Okay, so this is R1, this is R0, we just subtract. respect to i zero, no, I expect i from negative size x to size x, or radius x, at radius x to radius x, and then same with um, j and k, right, so those are like points on the, so like, just to explain what I'm doing here, this like i is in this direction, j is up, and then k would be like towards us or away from us. And so if our point is at like j equals, or i equals one, j equals negative one, we'd be down here, right? So this is like i is one, j is negative one, and k is like zero or something, right? And that would be the same for this point here, right? So i over one, j down one, and then k like nothing. So what we're doing is we're saying, okay, well this is the initial, relative position, this is the afterwards relative position, and we're taking the cross product of this, and we're multiplying by the density of this thing, and we're gonna integrate over over the entire object, so we actually get the total change in the um, mass or whatever, or total, yeah, total angular mass change or something. And so, and this might be simpler than thinking about it in terms of, right, in terms of this, right? Because this is like, I think this is more uh, accurate than we need, right? So like we're, it, I, I've already resigned to iterating this in the first place. 
So there's no reason why we can't just make this a more, like why we can't simplify this to make iteration a little bit simpler and faster, right? PF guns are realistic. Oh, PF guns are like really not um, realistic, but I'm trying to make some motions more realistic. Let's see. Need differential equations to make equations. I've never done intense math in Roblox Lua, but I did. Um, yeah, so like the basic idea, uh, gamut, mini gamut, is that uh, you can make like really good stuff if you know a bit of math, right? But like the stuff that I'm doing, like uh, I prefer things to be analytic, which makes it like way more complicated. Right, so like if you remember, so if you look earlier, so this is this is like the analytic solution, and this is like a nice little simpler solution. There's like a big difference in complexity between this and this. And so anyway, <clears throat> right, like look at how quickly I derived this, or this one, but like I had to think a lot to get this one, and even then it was wrong, and then I had to think a lot more about it. And so the idea is that uh, you can, you, like, okay, so like calculus and differential equations are actually really simple. Like differential equations is just saying, um, let's define like how this thing changes based on where it is, right? And so that's like gravity, right? So, so gravity, you say, okay, well, we have a massive object here. We have a little object here. And we're saying that its current position is here, right? So we, we could say its current position is F, right? And then we say, okay, well, it's acceleration, which acceleration is like, you know, what like under gravity, like you jump up and you fall. Um, acceleration describes how velocity changes, and so we say acceleration is f double prime. And we say, well, f double prime is based on some gravity function of where we currently are, right? So this is how we would describe it, right? So we say, where are we? Okay, our acceleration is based on, well, the question is, where are we? Okay, we're here, right? We're here. What is the gravity at this point? Okay, well, we just say gravity of our current position, right? We could actually be a little bit more explicit with this, we could say, let's say that this is like zero, right? So this is the, like this is the zero point. So we'd say that, okay, um, right, so we wanna go towards this. So this is actually a spring equation, right? So this would make, if we just let this run, it would look like this. or it would look like, right, so that's what this would look like. But we don't know, we, we know that that's not what it actually looks like. So, because we're saying here that the further away we get from gravity, the more gravitational force it has, right? Because this term gets bigger the further away we go. So the acceleration gets bigger the further away we go, right? So if we're right here, we, ex we would experience not, almost nothing. But that's not how gravity works. And so what it actually is, it's like negative F times like some gravity factor divided by um, like, what is it? Uh, the magnitude of F to the power of three, right? And really what we're saying is that, um, the reason why we're saying that is because we do negative F unit, right? I don't know how to, how to unitize a vector. How do you unitize a vector? Unit. Okay, well, I'm gonna invent some, right? So, or I could just do like f dot unit, right? So this is like Lua code. We multiply by some gravity divided by f dot magnitude, magnitude squared. This is our gravitational force value and this is our direction, right? So we're going towards, we're going towards the heavy object and then we're doing so with a, with an acceleration value or like a force value of some gravity constant, which could be like a thousand or like one or something divided by how far away we are squared. And so that's like what a differential equation is. And you could actually just, 
you don't actually need to like iterate this. I mean, you don't actually need to solve this, right? So this is actually pretty hard to solve because you get elliptic equations and so it looks like this, right? And so that's actually pretty hard, but um, maybe I could do it within like an hour or three if I started right now, because I've never actually tried to derive it before, but I'm sure I could if I tried. But it's like, it's stupidly hard to derive and it's not really worth it. You can just, you could just say, Let's um, let's move this thing by a time step of like 0 0.01 seconds or something, and then let's recompute this equation again. Okay, so C frames are kind of confusing as is. They are a basis and a position. I would suggest learning about bases on their own. Um, yeah, it's probably, yeah. Oh, cool, we have a vibe, that's awesome. Yeah, so um, probably a good idea, right? So start with like vectors and then go to C frames. I actually have a tutorial I wrote up, I think back in 2015, which is like six years ago. Maybe it was even earlier. Um, how to think about C frames. This should pull it up. Yes, yeah, so that's me. Yeah, so January 15th or January 2015. So I like, I thought about this a long time and I was like, it's like not that long, right? This is pretty, it's pretty short and to the point, but um, everything here is actually very simple. It just, um, Okay, C frames are hardware blocks represents 3D position and orientation of objects in the game world. Yeah, so like the basic idea is that this is like a box, right? This is like a like a part or something, and you have the center of the part here, which is the position. So like here's like what you would actually write into Lua, right? So you say this equals C frame components, right? The position is this top thing here, so that's the center of the part, and then you want to ask the question like, okay, well if what's the right side of the part. So like on my body, if I point to the right, this is right of my body, right? I mean, I don't know if that's right of the world or not, right? That could be actually, hold on, the that's west and that's east. So actually in world space, I'm aligned with the world. But um, if I do this and I'm pointing to the right, now the right direction is that way, right? So in order, in order to define the orientation of an object in 3D space, we have to ask the question, if we asked it to point to the right, where would it point, right? And so in this case, I'm pointing north because for me, that's to the right. Okay, and what about up? Well, that's, that's that direction. And what about forward? Well, that's that direction, right? And so that's the question we have to ask. Um, and in order to answer this, uh, we can do it pretty succinctly with, like pretty simply and succinctly with a, with a C frame and we say, okay, well, where am I? Okay, I'm right here, my center of mass. Which way is my right direction? Oh, it's that way. Which way is my up direction? Oh, it's that way. Which way is my forward direction? It's that way. And actually in Roblox, it's which way is the back direction, right? We care about the back direction, not the forward direction. And so that would be the X, that would be, or that would be my X, my Y and my Z, right? And so you can see, right? And if you know what vectors are, then you know how to represent a direction with a vector. And so, um, yeah, and I even like describe how uh, inversion time and multiplication works. So that's pretty cool. I should probably post this uh, here. Also, uh, my streaming schedule, I don't have a streaming schedule. Okay, so this equation will say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, so, because so I'm doing this, and I want to, oh, I should have been running this integration the whole time. Actually, this is really simple. Uh, huh. This is actually really simple because there's no, there's no, uh, 
There's no like multiplication between these two things. Right, so like uh, if we do i, j, k, y, y, and z, and z, and we do k. Is that really the case? This isn't really the case, is it? Is that really the case? That's not really the case. Is that really for real? No, really? Oh. Oh, we subtracted it. My dumb ass. Oh my gosh. Okay, cross. Gotta cross this. Holy cow. I thought I th I thought that was weird. I thought like what the fuck, right? <laughs> like, holy cow. Um, okay, cross, and then we get, oh geez. Okay, hmm. Okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we're not going to worry about that. Instead, what we're going to do is um, we're going to first, so we've already collected IJK. What we're going to do is we're going to do <laughs> in terms of. Uh, so matrices, right? So we're gonna do x x zero. Okay, x x y x z y x y y y z z x z y z z, and then we'll do zero and zero and zero and zero, and then we'll also do one one one, and we will do this one times. I, J, K, we will add X zero, Y zero, Z zero, and we'll do the same thing here. Hello, Alex, what is up? One, one, one. And yeah, so that's like the same thing. And then we'll just do cross product here. So cross this one with this one. Holy crap. Okay. Uh, and now we can I mean we could um, there's probably some kind of like product here right so how do we get the combination of all these things and it's probably hell I don't know me. <laughs> Easily representable in a four four dimensional matrix, right? Because we have one like two dimensions here and two dimensions here, and we pick this two dimensional and this two dimensional multiplying together, and then we can look on here and we can find okay, x x right, so we can find this right uh, I mean it should be an I squared term shouldn't it be so maybe not oh my god okay Uh, rotation represented is, is um, three directions. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I guess we just integrate this with spec. I wish we, I, I kind of want to collect 
the I squared terms. So what we actually have here, I'm going to look at this, right? So there might be a nice way to represent this. So here we have the I squared terms, right? And here we have the I terms, so that's with the position. And here we have the IJ terms, right? And so this is actually going to be, yeah, let's see. So is this the same XY and XZ? XY and XZ. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so 0, 1, 1, 0. So this is actually like the cross product of the individual components. And so, and so actually we could get this by doing cross the x, uh, the x, uh, the x direction, x, y, 0, x is e 0 with the next one. So x, x, 1, comma, x, 1, 1, comma, x, z, 1, and we get this guy, right? So, right, so y, x, y, 0 times x, z, 1, and then we get x, y, 1, x, z, 0. Yeah, and then we subtract, so that makes sense. And then this would be multiplied by, well, let's see what, like we literally just do, hmm. I mean, Christ, okay. Uh, and, then, like, and then we'd have to integrate with respect to um, I squared. And so these are multiplied. Okay, and then actually, And then what about, <clears throat> okay, so these multiply by I squared, which makes sense because we have Y and Z and Y and Z again. And then here, this one should be multiplied by J squared, right? So if we look for X, X, one, X is E zero, we're gonna find this, oh, with an I squared. Hmm, okay, that's nice. Um, and then this one should also be found with an I squared then. Yeah, that's with I squared. This one should also be found with I squared. Let's just, I mean like, it's gotta be, yeah, okay. So, and then we can uh, multiply by I squared, right? And uh, we get this. And of course we just integrate with respect to I squared. And so this might actually just be the cross product of each of these individual ones. So this one cross this one dot I squared this one cross this one dot, or times i j, right? And so like, let's go ahead and try that real quick. So, right, so we'll replace this with this guy here. So y, y comes first. And when we search for these terms, we should get, okay, if I'm previous, what do we get? Okay, this is i j, and then this one, is also ij. Okay, and actually what about, so if we search this one again, okay, and that's in the first spot as well. And so that's ij, okay. And so that's pretty simple. So okay, so cross product so far is just doing the cross product of each of these. So we do this one cross this one, and this one cross this one, this one cross this one. This one cross this one? I don't see any twos in here. But these are all unique too. Um, it might actually be that. Is it? Should it be this one crossed with? Let's actually check again and make sure these signs are right. So is this one positive or negative? Let's see. Find previous. Okay, so that one's positive, just like it should be. And this one should be negative, and it is negative. And let's do like this one over here. Make sure this one is negative as well, and it is negative. And so let's go ahead and see if we do this one, if these are negative as well, All right? So let's just y, 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 it should be uh, x, oh my god, x, x, x. And let's just make sure this one's positive real quick. My previous. Yeah, okay, and so we actually have four of these ij terms. And that would make sense because it corresponds to this one times this one cross this one. <gasps> what? The cross, cross. 
plus cross 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 that's crazy okay cool I'll just check this real quick like uh, oh that's a little spicy I'll check that out later okay and we do cross product uh, yeah, 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 we can leave this out and we can do this, uh, uh, can we do this, uh, no, it's taken into account, okay, okay, there's a relationship where C frames just mesh them together with standard translations, um, Interesting. What is a standard? What is a standard translation? Okay. So now we got this thing, and we can integrate with respect to. So integrate with respect to i squared. Okay, and we know what this is, right? So i. Ooh. Wait, no, no, no i squared doesn't. Yeah, no, this is bad actually. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. if we integrate this, yeah, so never mind, it doesn't go to zero. If only it went to zero. Oh, but actually this will go to zero here. So all so this will cancel out. And actually this will cancel. This all these all these terms here will actually cancel out. Let's just try doing, let's just try integrating with respect to this real quick. Also, I'm gonna to have to use the bathroom again, which is interesting. So I from negative uh, SX to SX, oh wait, I was using RX. Do I have this somewhere up here? I guess I got rid of it. Okay, I'll just do SX over two, I guess, whatever. Even though that, yeah, never mind. I want S uglier, ugly. So radius and radius and then J and K and we'll do Y and Y and Z and Z. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that. It all canceled out. Oh, look at that. Oh, beautiful. So beautiful. Oh, and I wonder if this, yeah, this probably isn't like simplifiable if we put it to a quaternion, right? Like that makes sense. And yeah, so we got like one third, which makes sense because we did the integral with respect to like I squared, and then that turns into a third and divides by the power, so that's one third there. And then we got this thing going on here. And now actually we can, because we know the mass, right? So we know the mass, so we can actually divide by our x, our y, our z. Because um, that would be, right, so we integrate over the whole thing, so we, we divide by volume and we multiply by mass and we get density out of this. And so we can go ahead and simplify this a little bit. And so we get this, and this actually, this like reminds me a lot of the moment of inertia thing. All right, I'm actually gonna use the bathroom again. So X D, let me read this real quick. Like an unreal unity when you commit a translation, you've done either. Oh, it's the same physics calculations. Yeah, I mean, that's the case in, own matrix that isn't affected by any other systems doesn't replicate well into this. So I actually don't understand this, right? So on Roblox, like C frames are just a, just like a matrix or whatever and position. And so that's like some very basic math. And um, well, the same functionality from C frame was meshed with it. So like the thing is, is that I think C frame is a very simple data type and I don't think it should be made more complicated, right? So unity and unreal when you commit a translation that can be done. So this seems like, so yeah, maybe that would be better for Roblox, right? If they incorporated this functionality where you can commit a translation to be done either in the local or local space respectively, but like you can actually do that in Roblox, right? So, so in Roblox, what you would do is you would say, like you can do things in world space and local space, right? So uh, like, so let's say that you have some, rotation 
R and you have like some delta rotation D, right? And so if you want to do, uh, if you want to apply this delta rotation in local space, so apply, uh, let's, let's, let's do this, apply rotation D in local space. Space. Right, so what you do is you do R times D, right? And then in world space, and tell me if this is what you're talking about. You do D times R, right? So, and this works in Roblox. And tell me if that's what you're talking about or not. And C-frames use their own matrix that isn't affected by any other systems. Um, but also, I think you might be mistaking C-frames for, like, the C-frame data type from the C-frame value inside a part, right? And so, like, the part contains a C-frame that describes its world, its world position, right? But, like, you can also change this by putting a weld into a part. And then you can set its its um, like the offset in the weld, and so then that uses a C frame that describes an offset instead of a world space position. If the same, then you have to do that calculation from scratch. Yeah, I mean, so if the direction is already given. Okay, so yeah, actually, I let's see. Then there should be the C frame API. Yeah, that might be useful, right? So like, I would so like what you're recommending, I would definitely never use that, but I think it would make it easier for like most developers, right? Yeah, interesting. So Unity and Unreal have a transform property. Okay, so it's like a transform property that's... Okay, the C-Frame API is... Oh, weird. Yeah, this is a much more complex class than like uh, what Roblox provides is a, simple, is a simple math class, basically. Like it's not exactly correct, but it's like pretty close and it's fast. This is like a lot more than what Roblox provides, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, whenever I wrote my engine, I definitely did not do stuff like this because it's, it's like, uh, it's like, okay, hierarchy plane. Interesting. Yeah, I have glasses. Yeah, I, I have glasses, but yeah, this looks like something that is, um, shall close out of this. This is pretty funny. Um, yeah, this is like very, this has a lot of business logic and I don't like having a lot of business logic in my math classes, right? Okay, so. Just wrote expand. Like, nope, that's not what I want. I actually want to collect some stuff, I guess. So I want to try to keep the matrices this the same. Okay, and so 
Okay, so I got this out of it and I wanna divide by this. And so actually what I'll do is I'll just Wait a second. Wait a wait a second. Uh, wait, are these nested? Ah, <gasps> they're nested. I don't like that these are nested. Why are these nested? What? I don't like what I'm looking at here. Um. Yeah, so we got like two times four, and then we got like two times two here, and there's like another two times, so that's eight thirds, and that's two, so that's four. And so here we have actually the positional component of this thing, and that's nicely done there, but it's like all, it's all like combined together. So I, I wanna figure out a way to simplify this thing out further so that way we can separate the positions from the matrix part, and that might make it simpler overall. And, um, so actually, I think I do want to expand this thing. So I think, yeah, I'm going to do... Yeah, let's, uh, let's get rid of this. I don't know what's going on here. And we'll do mass over this volume. So we multiply by density. Or, I mean, so we're getting... Uh, what do we have? So yeah, we are... So yeah, we're multiplied by volume. Mass of the thing, the total thing. Yeah, I think this is what we want, right? And so, expand. All right, now we get this, and now we can separate out this stuff. All right, but yeah, I actually need to use the bathroom. I wish they could go down so I could see any comments, but I don't know if there are any. But yeah, I'll be right back. How long have I been streaming for? I guess like two hours. Okay, back, and... Okay, now we look at this some more. And we try to recognize where things are. Okay, so we got rx squared, rx squared, ry squared. Um, it actually looks like we're doing like some kind of, this looks very, very similar to a rotation matrix. 
Right, so let's start, yeah. Uh, collecting. You know, maybe we could just do simple collection on this, right? So um, we'll just do collect uh, 66 um, with Rx, Ry, and Rz. And in my guess. And the number eight thirds. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty interesting. I actually kind of want to divide mass out of this. Right, and divide eight thirds out of this too. Right, so now we have this rx squared, ry squared, and we have this thing. Right, so this is actually just, this, this is exactly what we described. Oh, goodbye concurrent viewers. Um, this is actually exactly what we described up here, right? So mass, uh, but but we actually take it an eighth of it, right? Right, because we go with respect to radius. Uh, Right, because this is the true volume, then we have the mass of the full thing. So actually we need this guy. Um, 73. Right, and now we get divisions by three everywhere, and I'd like to simplify these out. But I can start by removing the, yeah, let's multiply by three actually. And I can remove this. All right, so let's go ahead and do plus this guy, comma, this guy. Oh, gotta remove space. Comma, this guy, so minus this. So these are the cross product results. And now we have this nice little Vector that is the result of some squared terms. And actually, these things don't change. So maybe we want to collect everything else. Oh, whatever. And so this is actually needs to be one third. We actually need to multiply the whole thing by mass. And then actually our X goes to, um, Why should I write it this way? Rx goes to size x over two, right? And so then this all gets squared and we get like a, like a divide by four terms. Then this turns into 1 12th, right? And let's go ahead and I guess just write that real quick. Z, y, and y. And when we do this, we Yeah. Right, so we get one quarter and all this, and then we can just like simplify and see that it says one twelfth. Oh, and it kept it nicely formatted for us too. So 
that's cool. And we'll just bring out this, uh, oh, except this minus term kind of sucks. But we'll actually just do this instead. Oops. Right, and then we'll manually divide by 1 12th. And we'll pull this out and then we'll do this afterwards. So that is a little bit nicer. And then we need to add this, um, this term back on, and we don't need it to multiply by three here, right? Um, and then this should actually be, this is like, it's pretty cool. And all these are nice and positive too. And let's go ahead and let's go ahead and like write this. Let's look at these matrices and see what we're actually doing here, right? See if we can write this out a little bit nicer, nicer way. That's really nice that all this stuff like managed to cancel out, which is pretty cool. Um, that makes me wonder about the integral of. Right? Did I even do? I did do cross product. Yeah, and that was like really ugly. But I do wonder. Okay, so let's see. This is our most recent one. We're going to get rid of this stuff here because we don't need that. And, okay, 112 mass times this guy plus the this one. And this is the initial matrix and then the following matrix and i guess yeah we should just look at this term to c frame and so we got here x y okay so x z times x y that's minus so would this be the equivalent to cross product this comma oh will this work Y zero x zero, and then we'll just copy paste this over here. I wonder if anybody's saying anything. One one. Okay, and this. Okay, x zero x zero x y one x y one, plus that looks the same to me, and that's for s x squared. And then here we have negative. Okay, what about down here? Right, so x x one xz0 minus, that's actually just, mm -hmm. so apparently we just cross these with the following one, and that actually gets us like a really, that's actually pretty interesting that it gets us that, All right? So we, that we're doing the cross product because if we, Right? Okay, that like that makes complete sense though. That's pretty cool. Hello, looks like I'm losing all my viewers, which is kind of fun because I'm just doing pure math, right? Like whatever, the average watch time, 10 minutes. Maybe if I actually pulled up Roblox Studio, then I, um, we'd actually keep more concurrent. Let's see, I'll get rid of this. But I think this nice little formula is done right and i can actually express this entirely term in terms of three cross products right so let's go ahead and do this right so hello frederick i already said that let's go to start writing out some code right so okay i that's fine um Uh, what is this angular impulse? Get angular impulse, and then we give it two C frames, right? So C zero and C one. And then we give it this, uh, get box, box angular impulse. All right. And then we give it a size though. Maybe size should come first for size and then we say um, oh but we need to give it like a center of mass as well so maybe this should be like 
world. Nah. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So make sure. Okay, and so we also need to do, uh, right, we also need to know the mass of the thing. Right, and so, so mass, size, C0 and C1, we also need to do get Maybe you should actually take, well, I don't know, like, what do we want to do? So first of all, we need to care about the actual impulse. And so getting the impulse, here, let's see if people are saying anything. Let's see, I'm trying to get into FPS games, but I don't know how to implement view models. Do you work on view models using C-frame or animations? Okay, so view models, um, so you're talking about FPS games on Roblox? Okay, so view models are just gonna be in world space. And all I do is I just, like in general, the easy thing to do is just take Okay, so the real solution that you want to do is you want to say, where should my camera be, right? And well, it should be like in the center of your head or something. And so you go to the center of your head's position and you take your like aim stuff and you generate like a, like a head C frame. And then you put the gun relative to the head C frame and then you put the camera relative to the head C frame as well. And um, that's, like, that's like what you should actually be doing. All right, so that's the good way to do it. Okay, so let's do get uh, box center of mass. Well, we know how to do that. Let's do get uh, center of masses. Uh, center of mass of boxes. Maybe I should make like a like a box object to memorize where they were. So like new box, and not an object, but like a data structure. Um, I don't know, or I should like So we have the C frame. I don't know if I should do capital. I usually do lowercase f, but I think it would be better if I did capital F, right? Because I think I do Q frame. Okay, C frame equals. Initial C frame. Though, whoops. We want to do, um, let's see, camera's relative to the head C frame. Yeah, but like you're going to want to write a custom camera as well. And the other thing is that you might want to take the camera and make it like go around and whatever. And so, um, and you don't want the gun to follow your camera, right? You want the gun relative to your character. And so the camera should be able to interpolate between like being up in the air and going down into your head, right? And the gun should be already on your body. And so, um, yeah. And I, I don't actually use the Roblox animations, right? So we've written an, an, an animation system and it tries to do all this stuff, right? So function-based, tightly integrated with Roblox, no inherent parent-child structure, animations act in groups of rigs, and animations can be played on top of each other, right? And then we want it to be like really smooth and continuous velocity, so C1 continuity. Um, Right, so we don't actually use the Roblox animations, but uh, but like you're like you're welcome to. I just can't help with that. But like, I really can't help with anything. 
So the initial C frame, we have the, which describes the position. Actually, we just give like a part, right? And then we could say, um, man, this is like, this is like not the right way to do this, right? We should just say like, give a list of parts. Like we need like a list of parts, right? And so, and we need to be able to remember what their previous C frame was. So, So I don't really know exactly how to structure this, but maybe we could just say, give it a model. Um, right, so we just give it a model. We could say, get, it, get center mass of boxes and we could give the boxes. The boxes would just be, would just be the literal, like the part objects. And so, uh, yeah, we could do it that way, right? And um, yeah, so we could just do for a uh, box in next. Okay. And like, we could actually make it really simple, right? So we could just say boxes of the part equals the previous C frame um, to like store it. But I don't know if that's like a good data structure or not. It does make it simple to manage. Right, and so we would say box dot C frame uh, or box dot position or something. And actually um, referencing the There, I'm having to do software engineering at this point. So parts, right? And so for each part, we need a cache of the current C frame and the previous C frame and the current size um, and the current mass, right? And so we can do uh, or whatever, like box or something. And then we can say boxes of part. Uh, yeah, we'll just so for part and next come up parts do we're gonna get the like we need to seed it with some data. All right, so we're gonna say boxes 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 of part. Also anything see if yeah cameras. Nobody's saying anything. Okay, and so we need to do boxes with respect to part equals. And then, yeah, so we're gonna do, we're gonna store size. We're gonna store mass as well. Mass equals part.mass, size equals part.size. Uh, yeah, I guess that's fine. And then we'll do C0 and C1, which will just actually be the same thing twice in this case. And I'm not dividing by zero anywhere in here. So that's pretty nice. Uh, yeah, okay. And so, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so create model data structure and then we'll do local function update create boxes. Right, box, box cache or something and then update box cache. We'll just take boxes or something. And maybe these names are bad, but we'll think through it later. And then we'll do, uh, we need to return boxes. And we'll say, yeah, we don't need to do that. Oops, okay, so we'll just take this. So we'll go through the boxes. Okay, and this is actually the part. Right, and this is actually like a list or something. We don't actually care what that is. So for part, comma, box, and next comma, boxes, do, and then we'll say that we will uh, 
box dot mass dot mass equals part dot mass box dot size equals part dot size right because like what if it changes or something and actually I could just use an event instead of rereading this every time which would be much better Um, yeah, so, uh, and I don't need to disconnect this. <sighs> Give this man a second monitor. <laughs> Perfect if he needs it. <laughs> Yeah, second monitors would be nice, I guess. Maybe I should get a second monitor. I like I don't have a lot of desk room though. I guess I could get a bigger desk. Um Yeah, so actually instead of but data structures are nicer than than objects, right? Because objects, but I mean objects are necessary in order to manage other objects, and so I guess I'll just start with this maybe. I don't, let me think about this, right? So we, we're getting mass and size and we're, we're, we'd be doing it every frame if we're updating, right? And so what we'd be doing is saying box.c0 equals box.c1 and then we would say, oh, I don't know why I have those there. So we do box.c1 equals part.c frame, right? And so we'd be doing something like this should update that up there maybe who knows and um and this is like a big like this is like three times slower than than this right so if we could get this out it gets three times faster because indexing these things is indexing parts is slow and so it would be better if we could just have an event because we don't expect these things to change very often but the problem is that if this part gets destroyed we need to, okay, well, the park is destroyed, that's fine. But if we need to destroy this, this cache, right? So we now need to manage the state of, and like it would be better if we could just call destroy on this cache, right? In order to manage the state. But I guess what we could do instead, we could say, you know, part dot, uh, what is it? Yeah, maybe I should. I just, I don't know what monitor to get. So like what I would really like is, right, so I actually want, I want this, right? Cause this is like a 240 Hertz, right? IPS display, um, but it's like small. And what I really want is like a 24 inch one I don't really need a battery. I did, the reason why I like this is because it's ultra portable. And what makes it ultra, ultra portable isn't necessarily the size of the screen, it's the form factor of the, of the screen. And so it's like this big rectangular brick thing and that makes it like really good, right? And so this actually comes with a tripod, which is pretty cool. Where's the tripod at? Okay, so it actually doesn't, it doesn't show it. Or this would be $600. Um, but if they could come out with like a 22 inch or 24 inch, I would, I would like that, I would pick it up. All right, so maybe, maybe what I should do is just ask them, <laughs> like, <laughs> is this actually the Asus store? Maybe they'll, yeah, will there be, I wonder if I could maybe they'll see this or something. Future. There, maybe they'll answer that. Who knows? Maybe they'll see this and they'll think on their product team, they'll think, ooh, maybe we could have 24 inch version or something.
I also want to downsize my desktop. Um, I think I'm going to wait for the for the 40 series to come out, which will be like a year and a half from now. Or the 4000 series or whatever. Is it an expensive monitor? My current monitor was like $800 or something. Um, but I got it when 240 hertz was bleeding edge, right? Uh, and also it's like a $500 monitor because it has, it's like more niche and then it's also got a battery and some other stuff in it. And it's also IPS, right? So I have a TN 240 hertz panel and actually I, I definitely like that it's a TN panel because there's no, there's no um, artifacting or whatever, whenever I'm moving the cursor around and stuff. Okay, and so I actually wanted to come here so I could um, so I could look up the Roblox API, right? So oh my god. Recipes. The hell? Actually I don't care. Okay. this gets. I hate that this is so long. Like I want, I want it to be like this long, right? Like when changed. I hate how long it is. And that doesn't give me the property does it. I don't think it does. Which I mean, I shouldn't need it anyway. I should just do local. Right, cash less. I can lowercase this thing, but I'm not going to. And then I'll just do boxes of part dot as changed, size changed, connection. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this, right? Mass connection, size connection, dot s size. Yeah, and actually, what would be better is if I actually split this up. Right, and so that way I don't have to re-index this size.x.y.z every time, but I mean, I'm just gonna keep it like this, I guess. Um, yeah, 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 okay. And then I could also technically cache this box as a part, right? Um, you know. That might actually be better because this is like its own self managed thing. Right, and so I would do that, and I would say that, and then I would do that, and then I would say this at the end. Right, and I think that makes sense. I'll go ahead and put some spacing here. All right, let's see, what are people saying? Good company for cheaper monitors. Oh, for $100. 21 inch, 75 hertz, nice. Yeah, see, I I just don't like how long this thing is, right? Like verbose method names are great. So like, look at my ver verbose method names. 
right? So get center of massive boxes, get box angular impulse, uh, or get angular impulse of boxes. Um, so I do it because it's better to do verbose things, but at the same time, I don't like verbose things, right? So math is like really, like look at how, look at how nice this is. Look at how succinct this is. It's like, it does exactly what it needs to in, in like a minimal amount of space. This density is, I live for this density, right? This is like, but, um, but this is like, this is the correct way to do math, right? If you're not doing math this way, you're doing math wrong. And if, if you're not programming this way, then you're doing programming wrong, right? So if that makes sense. Be interested to hear your opinion. But I'm like pretty convinced that if, if you're, <laughs> yeah, if you're doing math not this way, it's like not optimal. I mean, unless you're not a mathematician, in which case, you know, maybe it's better. I don't know, who knows? See, getting your impulse of boxes, that'll come for later. It gets into massive boxes, right? So we'll just do position. Let's do c0.p or c1.p, right? So this is the new position. This is like the current position. And we'll do um, sum right, and we'll do some position, and we'll do some mass, and we'll say zero, and we'll say, yeah, so we'll do this loop here, and some position equals some position plus, and I know I, know I could do plus equals, but it feels weird. Some mass equals some mass plus some mass. Um, box dot m, mass and then we return some position over some mass cool and then we do okay so create box cache we have box we cache box we return it we update box cache we don't need this anymore we need this dis destroy monkey ton if you nct a function function. So we're, what we're here, what we're doing here is we're making like a library or something instead of making an object because it should, I don't know, let's see, update box cache, we should do, um, I don't know, like destroy box cache. Boxes. And then we just Uh, what are we doing? Right, we get the boxes, we loop through them, and then we destroy them. Right, what is it called? Mass connection, size connection. Right, and then we just do. Right, and then that should be good, right? And like we could also dereference everything in here too. Right, so boxes, oh, yeah, boxes of part equals nil. And so now we have an empty box table. And so that'll be like a little bit safer. Yeah, okay. And now we can say, okay, we have our center of mass of boxes. And actually instead of, instead of this, we could do like, um, mass stabilizer. Library lib equals this, and we could do mass stabilizer lib um, dot, and this uh, impulse boxes. Um, kind of thing. Yeah, and so the idea is that we're actually creating a basis that we're rotating, uh, and like so we're we're smoothing. So we have a basis that we're we're multiplying everything by, so that we're smoothing out the position frame by frame. 
Um, and so to stand up again. I worked out yesterday, so I'm actually really sore. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I, I work out, but I worked out in a different way. Wondering if there's, oh my gosh! So I have to like scroll up and then back down in order to see this. See, person of mine. Okay, yeah. So one thing I saw from one of those streams looked like this. Look very nice. I'm curious as to how that system works. Vehicles at core six. This sounds like a roundabout way to do spherical lerp. Um, actually, I'm interested in seeing what sounds like a roundabout way to do spherical lerp. Oh, are you talking like? So spherical lerp, yeah, so a lerp, uh, I mean a slurp. Okay, and so uh, get angular impulse. Yeah, so like the idea is that if I go like this, my, see how my torso goes, see how my, my legs actually I've got to try really hard to make my body not move. I don't know if you can actually see that or not. But if I go really fast, see how my hips, see how my hips and my body move. And so the idea is that, like, if I do an animation where I, like, turn around real quick, I want to, like, I want to have my, want to have my hips move, right? So that, like, I want it to, I wanted, I wanted to look better, right? So I want the, I want it to be more energy correct. So that way, the animations can do what they want, but it has to go through like a more energy correct method, right? Okay, so that's what I'm trying to do. Now I'm trying not to like reference. Um, I don't know. I'm just like. I mean, this is what I'm coming up with. I'm trying not to use moment of inertia stuff because it's like a bit of a pain in the ass and this seems like it's easier to derive, but maybe not, you know, who knows. And also we're working with things in terms of boxes because it's simple. Um, like almost everything is boxes in, uh, in Roblox. Okay, so, okay, yeah, so we can get the center of mass and why do we care about the center of mass? Well, we also, okay, so let's, let's define the steps here, right? So step one, also whenever I did this, did it make that? Oh, it sure did make it lighter. Interesting. Okay. So step one, we, so we want to keep track of several things, right? So if we like teleport over here, we want to have an offset, so, and then we want to smooth the offset towards zero. So we want to know what the impulse is. So get the impulse. An impulse is just mass times. But we don't actually care about the impulse. We care about the delta position, right? And we care about the delta, delta angle. And, and so getting the delta angle is actually really simple. Right, if we go from here to here, that's just the delta angle. But what if we move, what if you do this, right? And the delta angle at this point might actually be zero, right? Um, and we can only know that if we do this full computation, right? And so, yeah, so we actually wanna get, 
we actually want to get the delta position. And that's just right center of mass one, so C so minus C zero. Right, and these are lowercase c for center of mass. And then we want to get the Right, so we actually need to cache the center of mass as well for the previous frame. Um, But if the size and the mass change really big time between those two frames, we should probably just use the most recent, <clears throat> the most recent mass and size, because that would be the stabler option. But like we could actually just cache all the information from the previous frame. Uh, So what actually, so maybe I like jumped the gun here, right? Okay, let's see. It sounds like you use springs for that. Yeah, I'm absolutely gonna use springs for it. Yeah, absolutely there's gonna be springs for that. Yeah, like the whole point is to is to compute. It's to compute how much out how many how, okay, so like here's what we're really doing. Right? So what we are like doing for real is we say we have this, like, say I'm floating in space, right? And let's say that I go like this. There were no external forces. I was moved entirely by internal forces, right? So I have managed to rotate myself around by doing this, right? And so in, there's, there's entire, entirely internal forces that have made me rotate in space. And so, like, this is totally valid, right? But the thing is, is that if I went in space like this, that is entirely external forces. And what we want to do is we want to smooth, we want to smooth the external forces, right? So that way, right? See what I'm saying? We want to make the external forces smooth. So yeah, smooth the external forces with a spring. But what are the external forces? And that's, yeah, so writing the right here, the code to do that. Find if I end up. Right, okay, that's the idea. Yeah, so we want to get the delta position, which is simple, right? We just go from center mass one to center mass. But what if the size changed a lot? I mean, maybe we, maybe we want that, right? I mean, like this is kind of useless to ask, right? But if we like evaporate a load of mass over here, I guess we just assume that the mass goes out uniformly in all directions. And actually the center of mass just moves, right? So really the center of mass should be probably like not cached. So yeah, don't cache these. I mean, don't like, um, like we shouldn't cache them from the previous frame to the next frame, they should just be current, right? So maybe I should actually even write M1 and S1 to make it really clear. And then I, which means that we can't cache. Uh, yeah, that would make it clearer. And that means that we cannot cache um, Okay, so we can't cache the center of mass. Yeah, okay. Yeah. In terms of physics engine integration, my experience in other engines, if there like something you can use. Yeah, um, there's no need for signals for collisions. I'm actually not interfacing with the Roblox physics engine at all uh, at this point. Oh, I got 69 playbacks, cool. Right, so Roblox physics like tends to complicate things.
So we cannot cache this integer mass. Cannot, so we have to use the current mass, the current size, the current C frame and the previous C frame we care about. So we only care about caching the previous C frame. So we need to recompute. Okay, so we need to get the delta position. Okay, so compute C0, center of mass. Right, compute C1, center of mass. Get delta position, which is what we care about. Subtract it. It from our offset, and then um, yeah, and so actually we already have it in terms of matrices, and so there's nothing to do in terms of which. Uh, but actually, like I'll start with with parts, and then I'll I'll probably turn this whole system into working with quaternions instead, because like that's what I need is for it to work with quaternions. And so let's see, so get the delta position, but it just so happens that it works better with matrices right now, which is nice. So get the delta position, get the Okay, getting the delta rotation, this is more involved, right? So the delta rotation will be this int this integral over all the points in the thing. Um, so what we need is the C0 sum of all Okay. Okay, sum of all angular impulses. And then the thing is, is that we actually need to get the, right, so we'll do this in world space. Okay, and then we need to divide by the, Right, so we need to divide uh, by the way I'm not actually listening to anything maybe I should oh this is a good song okay so we need to divide by the angular mass which so essentially we have like a time times uh, an angular momentum. And in order to get this into time times angular velocity, so t times angular velocity, we need to do the moment of inertia inverse uh, times the angular impulse, right, which we're calling j, right, and so And so what we're doing, uh, let's see, one with inertia. Angular like delta, right? And so, okay, divide by the moment of inertia, right? So this, instead of divide, it should be like, Inverse multiply, left inverse multiply. Okay, let's see, anybody saying anything? Let's check. Okay. It seems easier to cheaply computationally cache the applied forces when they are applied. Okay, but we don't actually know what they are, right? So I don't know exact use case either. Yeah, so the idea is that we're animating a character and so we're animating a character, but we want to like smooth them out, right? And so the the what the animations generate are not necessarily guaranteed to be smooth uh, in terms of, or like really good in terms of um, you know in terms of like world space uh, like inertias. And so like, yeah, sure, you can, you can cheaply computate, com, uh, computationally do this stuff. But the thing is that we're, we, are, we are not doing real physics, right? We are doing art and art is not physically correct and it's not physically easy. And so the most direct way to think about this is we say, let us just, let's just, let's just play the animation. And then we're gonna say, let's just like, 
the most direct way to measure this is, okay, well, like, where were we? Where are we? What kind of angular offset, what kind of positional offset do we need to do in order to maintain the center of mass? You know, whatever. Yeah, so that's like the idea. So we're just like measuring directly as possible. And so let's see, left inverse multiply by the moment of inertia to get angular delta. We need to compute the moment of inertia. Okay, so... This requires Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and so we love button first multiply but the moment of inertia, get angular delta or delta angle. Alright, and so this delta angle will actually be Um, we could approximate this by just adding it onto the current delta angle, but I think it'd be better to do, okay, delta, delta axis angle, then convert into rotation and multiply by offset rotation. Now, this actually makes it a little bit difficult because the thing is, is that There's actually like an infinite number of ways to get from one place to the other. And so we might actually just keep this in terms of axis angles. source. Uh, it's like going to be almost unusable by anybody. Uh, and also I don't like open source stuff, but I definitely will help people out, right? So if you want me to give it to you, I probably can. Um, or, I mean, or you could also just like look at the video and try to re-implement it. <laughs> and then you would understand it. Like I don't, hmm. like in general, I don't like open sourcing things because I don't know, I have like a weird, I have a weird way of doing things. Like, so first of all, my value is this. And so if I open source my value, then now all of a sudden I like lose value and I lose, um, right, so then all of the ability for me to profit is like, is left into Shea and Harrison, right? And so I actually make it harder on our team to do well. And like money is good, right? But, um, But, uh, but yeah, like I, I definitely like to help people out, right? So I love helping people out. I just don't like to give out stuff that is my, specifically my tactical advantage in the market, right? Like I'm not, I, like uh, open sourcing things directly hurts me. Does that make sense? I really hate this chat. It like, it stops working. Yeah, I don't need that running. I just don't need this running. Well. Okay, this tool has some like real problems.
Like, this is not bigger. You know what I should do? Is I should make my own art tool. Like, uh, relying on other people for stuff is... Is it at eight? Streamlabs OBS? I am using OBS. I don't know, maybe Streamlabs is a different version or something. Okay. So I will also have to compute the moment of inertia of this system. And in order to do that, I will either have to rederive moment of inertia, which I could which I could do pretty quick, or I could just look it up. Alright, so that's the question. Do I rederive moment of inertia real quick or do I just I just look it up. I, mean, I think I remember what it is. Right, I mean, I think it, it's basically this right here. All right, let's just. Yeah, okay. That was easier than rederiving it. Um, I mean, I guess I could. Oh, geez. Here, look, see, this ain't too hard. Why, why, why? Oh. Oops. Z, Z, Z. Bam, and then we just divide by. Bam. See, yeah, not that bad. I could have just done this, actually. Uh, this is of course uh, relative to like <sighs> I need to convert this into Point mass, even though I already know it, yep, it's, it's mass times radius squared. So do I actually want to compute the the mass for that? Or do I, I mean, the full inertia matrix? Or would it be better to just compute it given the the angular offset, right? And so, or like the current axis angle. And actually, I could do some convoluted system where I 
go from axis angle into rotation, and I convert back to axis angle. And actually, the thing about axis angle is that if that's 0, 0, 0 for axis angle, and this sphere has a radius of 2 pi, these result in the same rotation. So the blue line represents the identity matrix. And so does this. And so actually, if we're right here, we could actually, uh, let's see, we go plus 2 pi. Yeah, let's just go like right here, right? So we go plus 2 pi, minus 2 pi, minus 2 pi. All of these red dots actually represent the same orientation. And I guess the question is, like we could just assume that axis angle is pretty linear in space. And we could just ask the question, given the current velocity, what is the least energy path? Right, so, right, in this case, it's probably this one here. But if this one was going really fast in this direction, the least energy path would probably be like from this position instead of like, um, going like this, right? So that would be bad. I'll, I'll think about this later, right? So, okay, so we have the, um, and should we, okay. Yeah, do we, should we even compute the full inertia matrix? Like we could just do this thing, and like integrate over uh, all the, like, so we know, okay, but we don't know the axis of rotation, so we actually can't do this. We know the momentum vector. And so in order to actually compute that, we need to do the full last thing. Hmm. Yeah, okay. And so that would be um, like a Rx squared plus Ry uh, y squared, and that would be for the z component. Right, we'd multiply by mass, right, and this whole thing would be... Okay, so yeah, I guess I... I guess I'm ending up rewriting this anyway, so that's fun. Y, Z, whoops, R, Y, R, Z, uh, R, X, R, Z, and this would be, is this a negative? R, Y, R, Z, also I meant to actually, oh hey, what's up? By Phantom, oh, that's pretty cool. Value conic section. Look like conics. Oh yeah, there's no no solving this like intersections or anything, so there's no need for like conic sections. But um yeah, I've never thought about that. There's like definitely some conic stuff going on. I'm pretty sure this is uh let's see, so this is X. Wait. No, this is <laughs> X and Y. Oh my God, I'm an idiot. And this is X and Z. And this would be Y, Z. And this would be Y, Z. But yeah, hey, what's up? What's going on? Oh, hello again. Find the furthest away from point to go from the given force to the link to section. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's like fun to think about, right? And then we go here, and then this one is symmetric. Um, right, and so I'm pretty sure this is it, but like, I might as well just like look this up or something. Like, okay, so. Yeah, let's go and divide by. Yeah, so I mean, we can see this gives us the same, the same thing Right, so I'm pretty sure this is right, but like, let's go just like check it, right? So, um, 
compute uh what is this called moment of inertia? Insert. Yeah, because this is what I would do. We got times omega radius, and then, okay, but how do we separate out the omega? That's the question. Okay, and I, okay, and I understand. Okay, that makes sense, right? So we just, there it goes. Yeah, and it's negated x, y, and then y, z equals x, x, z, y, and it's just y, z times mass. Yeah, so this is exactly what I thought it was. Okay, and so anyway, what we're gonna do, instead of integrating, we have this relative position we're gonna multiply by the mass. So there's the center of mass like of the part relative to the actual center of mass of like the system, and then we do, so we need, um, it's like, so it's gonna be this guy, right? This actually is pretty, This is pretty interesting because we actually have this reflected. So we, uh, so there's actually like two parts to this equation, right? So we got the, um, so we've got the moment of inertia part, and then we've got like the, like the, like the cross part. And here we have this, like of the center of mass of this of the little part, and then we, here we have the center of mass part, and then we're also going to have like a moment of inertia thing as well. Um, And I'm pretty, sh I'm pretty sure, right? I don't, I don't know for certain, but I'm pretty sure that if we like added an offset to this, so let's say we integrated from, let's just do this again, right? We'll go from, we'll like offset this by like five or something. All right, so we'll offset this by X. And this will give us something kind of, probably kind of bad looking. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, here we are. And if we actually just plug in, yeah, we have m times x squared, right? And here we have m times x squared, m times x squared, m times x squared. So yeah, we're actually good. Right, this makes sense, I mean, as it should. And I want to see if I can actually get one of those diagonal components as well. So let's try adding something to y. Oh my god, I have to use the bathroom so much today, and I don't know why. Let's simplify. Like every two hours, that's crazy. Okay, and so here we got, yeah, so we got some diagonal components now. Let's go ahead and matrix form. Yeah, this looks like totally correct, right? This is exactly what we'd expect. Now let's do Y here. Yeah, so, yeah, there's Y squared and then X, Y, and it's just X, X, Y. Yeah, that looks exactly right. Cool, so I guess we'll just take this Right, so mass times this, which is like the center mass of the part, and then we'll just add on the moment of inertia of the whole thing, which is this guy right here. Right. Okay, holy cow, why do I have to pee so much? This is so bad.
It's like very clear P though. It's probably fine. Yeah, I'm standing up. Yeah, okay. But I want music play. Lateralist is a great album. I haven't really listened haven't really listened to it much recently. But yeah, uh, it's a really good album. Like, honestly, real quick. Um, X, Y, Z, X, Z, X, Y, well, X, Y to me. Yeah, uh, honestly, like, uh, Dad rock from the 80s is like the worst music, like the hairband rock. I mean, there are some exceptions, right? So like Van Halen's pretty cool. Um, but mostly it's like, it's about like sex and drugs and stuff, which I guess is fine, but it's really, it really objectifies women and whatnot. And I guess a lot of modern music trends do that too, but it's kind of gross. But yeah, 80s, 80s hairband rock kind of sucks. Best music is from the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, 1920s, 1960s, 70s, 90s, 2000s, and 2010s. Changed my mind. It's like everything except for the 80s, basically. Especially like, um, especially music from like, uh, like early 2000s, like post metal is pretty awesome. And then like a lot of indie like 2010s stuff is good too. Yeah, so this is pretty simple. Okay, so I actually need a computer, yeah, get the whole. Oh, right, and this is in local space. So this actually needs to be transformed. Um, but transformation, this is easy, right? We just take the C frame. Match the idea is we take the moment of inertia matrix and multiply by the, so this is local space one, multiply by the local space Omega, which we get by doing R inverse times Omega, and then we convert it back into world space. So in order to get the transformed one, we do this. And so yeah, so okay. Ugh, why is this so complicated? C frame, center of mass, center, right. Oh, 
box. Home definition. Get. All right, we just add the get point. Moment of inertia. This would just be assumed to be like it just needs mass, size, and C frame. And that C frame is just used as the rotation. And this just needs like offset or something. That's just rotation. So I mean, we're actually already subtracting the center from itself, but we're doing it like implicitly. Let's see where. Oh, yeah. Okay, here's the thing about. So like, there's a lot of good stuff but like this the stuff that was like hmm. okay band All right Okay, yeah, see, look at this. See, years active, 71 to 1980. 94 to 2016. See, they, it's not 80s at all. probably recognize something from Speedwagon. 1967 to present, see? Wasn't even, I see, like, the good stuff started in the 60s and early 70s. Right, I mean, like, it's it explicitly skips the 80s, right? It's like, they just stop in the 80s. Okay. That's good to know. Um, <clears throat> okay, when's Boston? Uh, band. No! Okay, so yeah, it started in 75. I don't know, it's like, I don't know, most of the, okay, so yeah, I guess, I guess Boston is like an exception to this, right? So they started like mid 70s, but here like, um, like the real, yeah, so like see the, the real good stuff, 1965. Okay, what about Rush though? Rush is good. Okay, yeah, see, Rush started in 1968. Uh, what about like... Years active, 1962. Um, uh, what are they called? I don't know, like, I don't know. Crosby still is Nash and Young. Yeah, so 1968, 70, 73, 74, 76, 2015. Okay, but yeah, like. Um, Fifty-six, 
7384. See, they even stopped like halfway. Oh, never mind. What about, uh, I mean, I wonder when Alice in Chains started. So that's like 90s grunge. Okay, they started in 87, but they like started in 87, right? They were mainly like a 92. What about Tool? Right, Tool Band. 1990 to present. Um, a Perfect Circle. 1999, 2004. Yeah, I don't know, like... I don't know, 80s were kind of... 80s were kind I don't know. <laughs> Should I? Okay, so I'm gonna leave this one open. I can close that one, close that one. This one needs to stay open. Yeah. That one can be closed. This one can be closed. These stay open. This one gets closed. Detail tracking. I guess you can see my tracking number. That one can be closed. That one can be closed. That one stays open. That one stays open at Astra. That one should be closed. That one's actually kind of... I just wanted to remember it. I'm not really interested in it, but it's kind of like... It has some not safe for work stuff in it. Close tab. Calculate series. Don't need that. Don't really need this. This is funny, I'm leaving that open. Don't need that, what is this? Sign in, write account, don't need that. All right, cool. Yeah, good idea. All right, so now I've closed out all the unnecessary tabs. Oh, geez, okay. Get moment of inertia. Should I even break this up further into like get, get local box moment of inertia? Maybe I shouldn't even break this up at all, right? Like I'll need to have like a transform. Right, and then this will just be. Uh, do we assume? No, it would be really funny is if I could just take this and multiply it out of a C frame. Um, I mean, it probably won't work, but like, I mean, like, it's worth a try. Right, so do I do one there? I guess I do. Right, because it's got to be like identity ish. X, Y, 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 Z, Y, uh, X, 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 Y, Z. Y, Z, Z, Z. All Z's, all Y's, all X's, X, 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 Y, 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 Z, Z, X, Y, Z. Okay, yeah, there's no way.
Yeah, never mind. Yeah, never mind. It didn't get easy. Okay, so like. Right, so this is mathematically correct, but I think it's only correct for C frames if they're unit orthogonal, so. Uh, yeah, like. X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. I really hate using C frames for this purpose. Right, because C frames are not for this. No, my Sublime Text is not connected to Roblox. Okay. I wish I could trust this thing to update. Okay, this really sucks doing it like this, but that's okay. My size. Um, and this would be like get uh, local, get get object, get local moment of inertia, and then um, okay, and they do yeah, T I A and I N E R I N E R T I A mass comma size comma c frame comma center uh, yeah i think get get relative get component right that's better right and this the system center I guess I could call this R, like whatever. Let's see. But it's pretty general, so I guess I'll just leave it like this. Mass and size C frame center, we do C frame. I mean, we could do whatever. Like, this is technically slower. Right. And then we just need this C frame. Uh, I could also do. Mass C frame center. Oh my gosh. Like, okay, see, so like the math part was pretty easy, I think. But like the software engineering just takes so long for me. Like, I don't know how I should be organizing this. Right? And I don't want to like overgeneralize, but this seems like a pretty good abstraction to do. And like this seems like a pretty good abstraction as well. Uh, with no position, right? Okay, get local moment inertia. Mass and size, get local box, I guess. 
Get box local moment of inertia. And then we need to take this C frame minus C frame dot P. And we need to do the transform on this. Transform it to world space. And first we need to get the moment of inertia. Which is actually just this. Get local, get box local moment of inertia. The mass and size. And actually, the center should come first. I think. Should the center come before everything? Probably. And then, because it changes the least. Right, and so now we have the I. And local R equals C frame minus C frame dot P. And then we do transform R comma I. Then we have the world space I. Right? And then we need to do um, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's uh, this is uh, organization is hard. All right, so we get point moment of inertia. We get the offset, right? And so, like, the alternative is we just give it a C frame and a center, but like that seems a little bit weird, right? So, because we can precompute that, and we're recomputing it, precomputing it here, and then um, like point I. Get point moment of inertia. She would do here. Maybe we do it right here, you know. <gasps> no, you can't add C frames together. <sighs> Those don't really need to be aligned. Add uh, CF, CFR, A, and ES. Okay.
Right, this is like local. I'm gonna check this on my phone. Let's check. Static typing functions. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let me just make sure what this is. No, Lua does not have this. Yeah, um, actually, if you get it for, right, so you can get it for relatively cheap. I mean, that's, it's relative. Right, so you can get Home and Hobby. You get Mathematica Online for like 200 bucks, right? Or you can get uh, Mathematica Desktop for like 350. If you use it for business, though, oh, that's what I had to pay for it. Right, um, but you can actually. Well, I mean, hmm. if one really wanted to, hmm. well, no, there are people who purchase it and then they crack it and then put up a download for people to pirate it. I'm not saying to do that, but that is definitely something that people do and then they don't have to pay this, right? And then, um, maybe I should have just subscribed, honestly. You could also do Mathematica Online. All right, so let's look at Home and Hobby. Yeah, so Mathematica Online, 18 bucks a month, right? This is like really not that bad for how useful it is. Um, so like, doesn't run on the desktop, but you get, I think you get full access to, you get full access to the language, which is really nice, like makes things go really fast. This is government, right? I don't care. Industry, Mathematica Online. Okay, so 1500 a year, full access to Wolfram language and knowledge base. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I think I, I got the standard, standard desktop, right? Because I don't need this online cloud stuff. It's actually about to expire in like a month or so. Wow, I really hate all this code I'm making right now.
Wow, I hate this code so much. Should call this components probably or something. Yeah, I mostly figured it out today in stream. But yeah, I, I really, I hate this code. It's so like, it's so ugly. Like, look at this useless function. Like what if Roblox just supported, like what if Roblox actually just supported matrices like straight up, right? And the only reason why I'm using C frames is because it's like a pain in the ass to transport around 12 variables, right? So I could also just, like I don't actually need to do this, right? I could also just, Right. Oops. So I could also do this, right? But now I'm passing around 24 arguments to this thing, and that really sucks. Like it's faster, but it's it's ugly, right? That's what I'm doing for the animation system. You know, like I have Q frames, which are seven components, so three for position and four for quaternion. And the way we transport the data structure around is we don't even have a data structure. We just like straight up send. We just pass around seven components at a time, right? And we don't have tables because tables are slow, right? And so I can actually, this is, got, this is all gonna have to be rewritten, right? This is all like too slow to actually run in the game. We have to convert it over to a quaternion based system and let's see, so get system moment of inertia, center, get center of mass, of boxes. Mm. And this is actually going to be recomputed, right? I mean, like. Hmm. Get component moment of inertia, center mass size. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. equals some inertia plus a uh, box of wait box dot what am I some moment of inertia right I need to actually get the moment of inertia right so I'll just call this some I can call this some I right this is nicer I equals Get component moment of inertia, where we give the center, the mass, the size. Here we do box. <laughs> right. 
Right, and this is like the total moment of inertia of the whole thing. Right. This is like the most recent one. But we also we need to get the uh, I gotta pull transform down. Yeah. Yeah, we need to get the new one minus the old one, get delta position. Okay, so we need to get delta position. Okay. I'm actually gonna get rid of this for now. Like that's all wrong anyway. Uh, destroy, update, create. Box cache, get center of mass. Get system center of mass, get angular impulse. Oh, I still need that. Uh, some moment of inertia, get angular impulse. Uh, oh my gosh. Get system angular impulse. Local function get uh, component. What was I even doing? Get and see, like, even here, like, all this could actually be combined into one thing, right? I mean, it's, it's less clean to do that, but like, the other. Th Uh, what is happening in the chat? We can just like table of numbers, matrix functions. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool if we could have matrix functions. But it like it also definitely increases the the complexity of the language. Let's see, I know other libraries are Python. Oh, PF made gun animation good. Yeah, I guess it did right at the for the time. Um. Right, I mean, but like, uh, aim trainer. Let's actually, let's just make a new tab. Actually, I need to go here in order to access this. Here, um, Stella Studios. Right, so this is like, uh, this is like, a build from like six months ago or something. And then we started redoing it and I'm still, we're still in the process of redoing it, right? But like we rushed to make this thing. And so we made a lot of decisions that uh, are not good, but like, With all the animations, like this is definitely like the best in Roblox, right? But it also it's very brittle because the way we programmed it. 
Um, right, but also uh, fun fun fact: the the physics is actually all custom. So actually, the movement and stuff. Um, But yeah, like the movement is all custom. Uh, the the ray casting is not custom, right? But the ray casting is used for bullets. Uh, the physics collisions are using uh, Roblox's uh, like get parts in region three, right? And then we're doing like a lot of processing on the top of that. I I think I kind of want to retry to make it. I try to make it again because I think I could do better. But uh, yeah, like. No fall damage yet. Wait, why isn't this bouncing? This should be bouncing. Why isn't that bouncing off the metal? Yeah, it's kind of fun to just like run around. Something kind of fun. You can push into things, right? Because your legs actually keep you up, right? So your legs have a target height they try to keep you at. See, I guess the... Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's pretty reasonable, right? Let's see. Come on, stick up. Uh, let's see, Max starts in. Pretty reasonable. I think we could go faster. Where's my other magazine? Uh, right, I could also like I go on the floor. Right, so release magazine, I don't have the other magazine. I think we could actually do better on the animations. Whenever we release the slide, there's a lot of, there's a lot of like, of course I love my safety. There's a lot of um, like back and forth that we aren't representing here. And there's nothing in here by the way, I mean obviously.
Yeah, of course it's real. Nothing in the magazine, right? Like I obviously checked. Right, like, let me pull up. Look, obviously, like I, like see nothing is chambered. Right, and so magazine, nothing in there. And so when I put the magazine in the gun with nothing in the chamber, with nothing in the magazine, there's not gonna be any bullets in the magazine, or in the, in the chamber. So, right, so like, again, nothing there. Right, fire, whatever. But um, like the other thing is, is like the last time I shot this was actually quite a while ago and I did a full cleaning on it. I can take it apart like right now. Right. Let's just go here. Um, let's see, magazine is out. Whenever I'm doing this on stream, it's always, there we go. So retainer pen is out, right. Let's go ahead and get this guy out. Recoil spring out, barrel out. See, it's like, like nothing dangerous here. Recoil spring in. Back on the slide. All the way back. Go for just a little bit. Retainer pin in. Retainer pin all the way in. Function check. This goes back on. There, see? Function check. Fire. Oh, right, it's got the. It's got mag safety, so in order to actually pull the trigger, the mag needs to be inside. See, it works just fine. But um, yeah, it's like, it's not like I keep my guns loaded, right? These are real guns, but they're mostly used as like animation props and thinking about animation, right? So like, again, nothing in there. Put that back in, so that way I can just like stay down. Nothing in the chamber, see there's no round in there. That goes in, slide release, right? And again, the last time I shot this, I like cleaned it, right? I don't like leave my, I don't like shoot guns and then not clean them. Like, holy crap, that'd be awful. Let's see. So this is a 12 gauge, nothing in here. Hmm. Can we get a speed strip? <laughs> I really, I don't really want to strip the shotgun. Actually, the shotgun is for defense. Shotgun is actually for self-defense. I usually keep the shotgun loaded. Yeah, it's an AR-15. <laughs> and in Texas, um, it's a... This definitely is not a Mossberg 500. Like this has Remington 870 written all over it. I mean, it even says Remington Arms Company. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know if you can read that, but it says Remington on it. Yeah, I actually really like this shotgun. I got the, I bought it with the short barrel. I didn't like saw it off or anything, but I also have a long barrel as well.
Uh, yeah, let me actually just grab this real quick. So the um, so this is an AR-15, but uh, the cool thing is is that it's a Colt AR-15. So if you look there, it says so it says Colt, and then you probably can't even read that, but it says M4 carbine, right? Here, let me make this bigger. So there. Oh my gosh, I can't focus that close. I don't know if you can see that M4. Ah, there it is. M4. Yeah, this thing is pretty cool. But it's loud. So I'm... Honestly, what I should do, I don't remember what Biden's... So first of all, I don't really want to get political, but I don't agree with the left on their gun issues, right? Like, I actually think the right has a point on, um, like, gun ideas, right? So, like, it's clear that we have a mental health issue here in America. But, like, I don't think that the way to... I don't think that the... Like, I think... Do we really want to trust a government that just elected Trump for four years to like decide who and who can't get firearms? Like, I don't know. Right. Like, so yeah, guns are fun. Guns are good. And, and like guns are how we fight against like Nazism and bullshit like that. Right. And so I really, yeah, I really don't like that. I'm, I voted for Biden, but I, Yeah, like this really sucks. Oh, right, I need to make my... Right, but like, uh, yeah, so like Joe Biden knows that gun violence is a public health epidemic, like 40,000 people die as a result of firearm injuries, right? But like, here's the thing. So I guess the question is, how many of these people are... Um, Like, so here's the question, right? So how many of these are suicides versus murders? I don't really think we should count the suicides here. Yeah, so suicide is like 60%. Okay, this is actually more homicide than I thought there were. I thought it was going to be like 80% and like 20% or something. But I don't know, let's see. So, like, there's like a huge increase in gun violence. From twenty like fifteen, have like twenty fifteen to like twenty eighteen, but this is like massively dropped off at this point. Yeah, this will probably go up in 2020. 
user five. Oh, malicious. Yeah, this number really sucks. This one does too. And also mass shootings really suck. And if, okay. But it's like, um, why is this turning into talking about gun rights? Ban guns entirely. Yeah. Yeah, no, so, yeah, so mini garment, or gamut, mini gamut. So here's the idea, right? So the idea of, of um, hmm. so the, so I'll start with an anecdote, right? So in the 50s, uh, there was a lot of police violence against black people in California, and I mean, in general as well. But in California, um, in, uh, what's the place that's across the bay? from San Francisco. Oakland. So anyway, in Oakland, Huey P. Newton uh, Huey P. Newton, so Huey Newton founded this Black Panther Party in 1966. And the reason why was because there was a lot of, right, so look at this, right? So they're anti-fascist, they're anti-imperialist, anti-racist, anti-capitalist, which is like interesting, right? So like they're really leftist, right? And pro-gun rights. And so the idea is that because there is so much like racism and police violence and whatever, and like supposedly this is brought up by capitalism and whatnot. So anyway, the idea is that, um, the idea is that, okay, so let's get our own guns so that we can protect our own, so that we can patrol our own streets and then also deter cops from doing violence, right? And so this was actually really effective. It was so, infect so effective that what, um, what California ended up doing was uh, they, so like the reason why California has stricter gun laws than other, than other states is because the Black Panther Party in California was so effective at policing themselves and like keeping police from doing like violence and whatever against black people that California is like, no, we got to keep like hurting black people. And in order to do that, we got to ban guns. Right. And so it's like, the question is, so like, yeah, the reason why California has gun has like worse gun laws than other places is because of racism. And so the real question is like, do we really trust the government to determine who should and shouldn't own a gun? Right. And like, my answer is like a super big no. Right. And, yeah, so I don't know. That's my take. Right, and so like, and honestly, my opinion right now of what's happening, so now, like now Democrats have control, right? Like just barely, but the idea is that uh, they're gonna, so I think they're gonna vote to like remove the 60 vote, like majority, on like passing legislation or whatever. And so from like, let me explain this from a statistical standpoint, right? So let's say that we have government policy and green, right? So here we have time, right? And here we have government policy and green and here we have like political noise, right? So like Trump was an example of political noise. And what happened with Trump is that, um, so it happened with like, so Trump was like a fluke, right? This is like a noise, like Trump lost the popular vote and uh, and yet like he was elected anyway. So like that kind of sucks. But because of this, because of this noise where like Trump was accidentally elected, right? Um, like I think it was more likely for Hillary Clinton to be elected, but like the more likely thing is that like somebody else could have run against Trump and then won against Trump in the past instead of Hillary Clinton, who's like a corrupt piece of shit. And so anyway, um, the idea is that like, so here's the, the noise is in blue. And so this is the current state of our government, right? And so it looks like this. And the idea is that we have these existing systems that try to smooth out how quickly uh, like the government can pass regulation. And so the, so the government regulation wise looks like this, right? And so, 
right? So like, I don't know if this makes sense, but this is like government policy that's being passed. And this is like the noise of like what the current, like political noise in the United States. And um, like, maybe this is Trump right here or something. And so the idea is that uh, currently with the way voting works in Congress, like it's pretty hard to pass legislation, right? And so like a lot of this is pretty slowed down. And the idea that I, that I am pretty sure of is that if the government, let's say that this is like right, right? And let's say that this is the tipping point for Nazi rule. Okay, so whenever, so what Democrats are gonna try to do is remove this thing called the uh, like filibuster. And the filibuster is a way that like the mi minority party can slow down how quickly uh, like legislation is being passed. And so let's say if the, what, like, what if that was removed, right? And so here's what, here's what it would look like. Here's what the government would like policy would look like uh, if that was removed. Right now, here's the thing. So at this point, something interesting happens. And so when we pass this line, where we, where we get to this edge, right? So we get to this like tipping point. What happens is all of a sudden we remove policies that give power that can let, that can let this go back to the center. And what happens is we make it slow again and we give more power to people who want to like control us or whatever. And when, instead of it going back to normal, like we would expect, it can you continues to like, it can use to uh, like positive feedback loop where like it just gets worse and worse and worse and there's nothing that we can do about it, right? And so like, we've already seen this happen. And so what happened was like, so you know how many justices were uh, like promoted to the Supreme Court position under Trump? Let's just look it up. There we go. 17, 18, 2020. Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett. And why did that happen? The reason why this happened is because we, um, we removed this 60 vote minimum or the 60 vote requirement in order to actually like get these people uh, appointed or like approved to become justices in the Supreme Court. And so like, okay, well, what happened? Well, it turns out three people died. Like, so again, political noise, right? So like people like don't die very often, but in this case, we had this political noise where just people just happened to die under Trump. And because we didn't have this, the filibuster in place for this, like where we had the needed the 60 vote majority in order to pass this legislation, we got one, two, three, like, like stupid, like Trump right wing appointees or whatever into the, into the Supreme Court. And um, this is like really bad, right? And so this, so like what we're seeing here where we got these three like Trump appointees into the government is where we're seeing like, so this yellow line, right? So Trump appointed or like Trump became president here. It went over like it's it like see how much more rapidly like this shit changes, like three, like three Supreme Court appointees in this, in the, during Trump's term, and they're all right. And they're like, I don't really have faith in them. And so, yeah, and so like, this is pretty possible, right? And so like, I really, I trust, I trust the Democrats to like not pass legislation that's like gonna like take away our rights, except for these, right? I don't trust them at all with these. But the, the idea is that if they're doing this, what they're doing is they're like really upsetting this balance that we have of like incrementalism and in policy. And in four years or six years or two years or eight years or whatever, when Republicans take back over Senate, um, the Senate, what's going to happen is like this like right word political noise is going to cause like rapid shifts in our um, like in our government policy. And then we might really need these. And like, and I don't know if y'all are aware of this or not, but in uh, like the Nazi party in the 19, like 20s staged a coup in Germany. And anyway, like it was barely effective and nobody really cared. And it was like, they kind of laughed it off because it's like a small movement that really didn't do anything. And then 10 years later, 
World War II starts. Or I think actually there is another coup that actually works, right? Or he's like elected leader or something. And so anyway, I'm like seeing some real parallels here, right? So like everybody thinks Trump is a joke and everybody thinks these white nationalists are kind of like a joke. Like not really, but like, you know, they didn't actually manage to do anything at the Capitol when they invaded and, and whatever. And um, yeah, anyway, yeah, I don't know. We need these, right? Like we really need these. Like America is not ready to not have guns, right? So I really do not trust, I do not trust the government with telling the people what they can and cannot own as far as firearms go, right? Like, I don't know. Yeah, that's like totally wrong. Like no one has arms equals no violence. That's like completely wrong. Yeah, that's like, there, there are like violence, there are different kinds of violence, right? So there is violence where you, um, there's like, oh, like, oh, you know, you shoot somebody, like that's violence or whatever. But, um, so like, that's like violence or whatever, like you shoot somebody or something and that's like definitely, that's physical violence. But the, um, yeah, actually, why not show it on stream? Is there like a policy against that? I guess there actually, there probably is like a YouTube policy against that, but like, actually, I don't think so because there's still gun YouTubers, right? And I'm not like doing violence or anything. I'm just talking about politics. And so, um, and it's not like it's marked for, it's not marked for uh, like kids or anything. Yeah. Yeah, so like gun violence goes down. Yeah, so like violence in general stays the same, but like the big point here is that there are other kinds of violence and physical violence. There is also political violence and racist violence, and like there's even verbal violence, right? And so like, um, and so like you can subjugate an entire like group of people without even needing firearms or anything, right? And so like, like we literally have that today where like there's tons of violence that goes on against like minorities in the United States. And, um, and like, it's not even like, it's like, it's called discrimination, right? So it's like political violence where people make policy against a certain group of people based on like race or like income or something, right? Like, which is like what, that's what America is, which really sucks. Yeah. Oh yeah. Beastars, it, it rocks, right? Beastars is great. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. No, I really think it's deeper than just the using a knife instead of a gun. I think it's, it's totally, there's a lot of different kinds of violence, right? How about more freedoms? Yeah, like it's, it's pretty, there's a lot of problems, but yeah, basic point stands. America's racist. I do not trust the government. There's too much political noise. Trump was elected because of political noise, uh, because there were not like, things in place to prevent him from appointing three uh, Supreme Court appointees. Now we have like a super right leaning Supreme Court who can basically just uh, interpret the law however they want, which like really sucks. And um, now that Democrats are going to be removing the filibuster, which is like one of our protections against this, like political noise cause like leading to our destruction. When the Republicans take back over, I really do not trust them at all to implement policies that are not violent towards minorities and really towards like people in general, right? And so like, once again, there are these parallels where with, you know, Nazi Germany, where like there were, there was a coup staged in the 1920s and nobody thought anything of it because it was a fucking joke, right? Because it didn't do anything. But once again, like it really, like 10 years later, like World War II started and like that's some super big bullshit. And like Trump is gonna live for a while longer, right? Unless he gets cancer or something. Yeah, and so like once again, these things are necessary for the maintenance and of a of a free state. It was majority Democrat for the past seventy years. Yeah, but how how majority was it, right? And the other thing is is like I know that I know that we can be like super like okay, both sides have points or whatever. Yeah, so Mini Gamut, where are you from?
Yeah, so if Democrats remove the filibuster, I'm afraid that political noise just caused by random chance will make it easier for in the future Nazi sympathizers to uh, to create and pass legislation which leads to a runaway effect where we fall under essentially Nazi rule, right? Okay, so the US Maryland. Yeah, so what do you mean having farms to protect us from the government? Do you have my, do you have my audio on? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I really don't trust the government at all. Right. Like I don't trust it to, yeah. So the Nazis were like leftists. They were like national so socialists, but, um, but let's like, Let's be real here, right? So were they really? Like, what was the most important part? Like out of those, out of those four words, right? So national socialist German workers. Yeah, so I don't like Democrats either, right? So like, I'm not like a fan of Democrats. Um, I think that the Democrats are the lesser of two evils. Right. Like I, what I, what really should happen is instead of like, I think instead of Democrats and Republicans, we should have like democratic socialists versus libertarians is kind of how I view it. Right. But like, unfortunately, currently the libertarian party is like conservatives in disguise, like conservatives pretending to believe in freedom. And then the Democrat party as it currently like democratic socialists are actually pretty good. Right. But the current Democrat party is like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and left by modern standards today has changed due to the realignment. Yeah, so like, um, no, 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 no. So like in, uh, do you remember? Hmm. The, there's a famous speech where John F. Kennedy says, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And at the time that was not laughed at. Right, that was like a, that was like a real, like sentiment, right? And people like agreed with that, like that resonated with people, right? And that's why we remember that speech. And, um, and then like a couple decades later, we have Reagan and, or I think it's a couple decades later, let's see. Oh, 1911, 81, 89, 61. Yep. So yeah, a couple, a couple decades later, we get Reagan, right? So again, so sixties, John F. Kennedy asked not what you can do for your country, but what your, I'm mean, sorry, asked not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Two decades later, Reagan comes in. His, his main, like his vibe, right? It's like, so, that's such a bad term, but his, like his thing is that government should get off of people's backs, right? And so in like, in one generation, we go from do contribute to your country to get your country off your back, right? And so like, and this is like a lasting, this is like a lasting sentiment, right? And so like, not only that, but yeah, I don't know. It's like the government, like the, the, the president has like a real effect on what the center of mass or like what is found, what is thought to be acceptable, right? And so like Trump has set a lot of precedents that will likely be carried forward by the GOP in future, like when they win in the future, cause they will, right? Um, like unless Trump just totally dissolves everything, but like Trump definitely has a lot of political power still I mean, he may not be talking so much, but he still has a hell of a lot of political power. And uh, he has like totally changed the center of mass of our country to the right, 
right? And not, not the right in a good way. Like, I mean, if there is a good way, I mean, like, right in terms of, like, like, Nazi, like, racist, like, bullshit, right? And he's empowered these people to, like, I don't know, he's empowered these, like, white nationalists and whatever. Um, and yeah, I don't know, this is, like, really not a good thing. Yeah, yeah. So you got like multiple dimensions, right? So pol politics are like, uh, like, so you got like increased, you have like increased economic freedom and increased social freedom and decreased social freedom and decreased economic freedom. And, um, that's like two dimensional. And then you have like other dimensions as well. Like, like the side, how big should the government be? Like, where should we apply these policies? Right. And so, yeah, I don't know, like Trump is bad. Trump is really bad. Right. And he's like, not only, not only has Trump like, and I voted for that guy too. Right. I voted, I was a Trump voter and I like, I deeply regret this, right. This like really sucks. Right. And so, like the thing is, is that I'm fully aware because I was a Trump voter and a Trump supporter. I like fully recognize how like, like social, like rivers can like direct you into making decisions that are like, I don't know, not good. Right. Like I had, like, that was some, that was like a seriously bad idea. Um, and anyway, now like Trump is like left, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Trump's not good. See, what did Trump do that was bad? Okay, so here's, okay, so like, if you don't actually know what Trump did that was bad, then that means that I, you've probably heard the things that he's done that are bad, and I probably won't be able to convince you that the things that he's done are bad. But like, um, I don't exactly know how to formulate this in a way that will be convincing to you. I'm assuming that you're like a, a Trump supporter still or something, yeah. But, um, and like, and, and look, so I mean, like we, like we can state like concrete ways that Trump is bad, but let's just think about it like this, right? So let's look at recent stuff. What did you do bad? Yeah, no, Biden kind of sucks. Yeah. Okay. So here's like, let's go through the story time. So we have this president Trump and election is coming up like re-election is coming up. So what does he do? Well, okay. So we have this pandemic going on. Actually, let's go back a little bit further. Right. So we have, okay. So like, I actually think that Trump's idea is to like go to go into like an economic trade war with, with uh, China is like a reasonably good idea, right? Like China is like the CCP sucks. Right, they're like a like a leftist communist like bullshit kind of party and they don't have any real freedoms. And anyway, like the reason why China is so competitive with the United States is not because they're actually like producing real value, but because they are relying on like like a crappy like they're not paying their workers anything. And so anyway, yeah, so like China like China doesn't have like work work laws and whatever, and because of that we have like, and like stupid people, stupid CEOs and whatever, and like CTOs in the United States that go to China to manufacture goods instead of like keeping manufacturing jobs over here. So like, I definitely agree with this idea that we should be mounting this trade war on China. Um, but like the problem is that if we impose more restrictions on what US, government, US uh, companies can and can't do with like foreign labor and whatever, then like US companies are just gonna loot US soil. Right. And so really the change needs to come from China, where China needs to implement social policies that prevent, you know, people from being paid like literal, like starvation squared wages. But anyway, so like I actually agree with Trump's idea to start a start a, a war, like an economic trade war with China. But like, um, so let's start with the coronavirus. Right. So like this is just last year. So we all remember it. Uh, the coronavirus. 
uh, whenever it was, whenever it came out, um, Trump is like the president, right? So he's the most powerful man in the world and has the most info of like anybody in the world. He should know that, or he should have known uh, to like go immediately to Dr. Fauci, or I don't think Dr. Fauci was there at the time, but anyway, he should have known to go to like a, like a professional, like scientist and doctor to like actually see, you know, hey, like what kind of precautions should we take? And as soon as we saw it like blowing up in China, as soon as we saw that we had like cases here at all, we should have done an immediate shutdown, just like New Zealand, like South Korea and like other places, and we wouldn't be in the current position that we're in. And so anyway, now we're currently like, and like this is a this isn't a problem just with here. It's like also a problem in like, you know, uh, like, I mean, like a lot of European countries too also have problems with that. Norway doesn't, right? So Norway doesn't, I think Sweden doesn't, like a lot of European countries don't, but like um, like the British have like a big problem with it too. But they're also like controlled by, they're, they're also like their government leaders also kind of like iffy, right? But like Trump should have been able to take more actions like a lot of other countries did. You know, especially considering how much knowledge he has, right? And instead, what he, what he ended up doing is like just saying, "Oh no, don't worry. It's only six cases. It'll go away in like two weeks. It'll you'll see it. These numbers will drop. They'll go down to zero. You know, don't worry about it, right? It, it's it'll like in the in two weeks we'll forget that it even uh, if it ever that it ever even existed, et cetera, et cetera. And then like, and then like okay, and then I think in late February or something he implemented or he tried to implement this like this China bit travel ban. Right, which I mean, was blocked by Democrats. So like, like what the fuck are you doing, Democrats? Holy shit! Like Trump tries to enact good policy and like, holy crap. But anyway, yeah. So like, so Trump then tries to do this travel ban, but like, no masks or anything. Like he's not like doing, you know, he's not like implementing major. Um, like I mean, what Trump has more than anyone, like Trump's power is not his ability to legislate. It's his ability to influence the American public, right, the American population especially the people who voted for him and who support him. And so, yeah, and then it was called xenophobic. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's called racist. Like, oh yeah, yeah, no, but like, I think he actually called the virus something actually racist though, right? Which is like not necessary. Yeah, so I mean like, so Trump made the right decision here with trying, but he made it too late and he didn't, he didn't promote masks. He said, you know, this is all like, what did he say? He said like, this is a scam to try to scare people. Like, um, you know, whatever, whatever. And like, he, Trump could have influenced people to actually wear masks. And now we have like anti-maskers maskers going around and whatever, and people think that it's not like a real thing. And now we're left with like 400,000 and counting deaths and whatever. And um, so that really sucks. But yeah, like hit, Trump's response to the coronavirus was too little too late. And um, and it was hampered by Democrats, but that's only like a small piece, right? So let's like not, not focus on that, right? So the main, yeah, so Kung flu, right? So that's like, pretty racist. And if that doesn't seem racist to you, then maybe you should reconsider what you think is racist. Right. And so, um, and so like, so yeah, so major mismanagement of coronavirus. And so then what happens, right? So, okay. So election re-election comes around and he says, um, and then like states start implementing, including like Republican states start implementing policies that allow more people to mail in ballots. And okay, so, and keep this in mind, right? So traditionally Republicans have been pro mail-in ballot because they get the older population to vote and the older you are, the more likely you are to vote Republican, right? So Republicans have like historically encouraged mail-in ballots, right? And so anyway, so here's what happened, right? So um, because of coronavirus and people don't want like massive breakouts to occur and like huge numbers of deaths to occur because of voting, what they do is they implement policies for mail-in ballots and Okay, so Trump recognizes what is what does he do? He says, okay, we're going to defund USPS, right? So conveniently, he, he brings out, okay, USPS is losing money, which it always has. The USPS is actually guaranteed in the Constitution. You can look it up, right? So like the, um, like the Constitution states that the US government will provide a postal service, right? That's the United States Postal Service. And so... Um, so anyway, he says, oh, it's like, it's not, it's losing money, which it has for centuries. And he says, okay, well, we're going to defund it, right? Which is like stupid. And like, this actually reflects, like, I actually experienced this, not because I mailed on my ballot, I went to person to vote because I'm young and like strappy and whatever. But um, like, I had a fursuit that was shipped to me on December 6th with two day priority mail through USPS. 
and it did not arrive until a month later, right? On like December 31st or something, like one day before um, New Year's. And so anyway, this was like, this is like some pretty pricey like priority mail and it, like we had like a real, it had like a real impact on me because like my package took a long time to deliver. So I know that Trump actually did defund the USPS in a real way, right? And so you have the defunding of the USPS to try to prevent ballots from going in in time. And so anyway, what ends up happening is like a lot of states say, okay, as long as it's postal marked by uh, the 3rd of November, um, we're going to like accept these ballots, right? And so anyway, uh, like, okay, like let's, let's get off of this, right? So the other, like, so, okay, so what does Trump do, right? He says, okay, well, let's look at the pattern. Mail-in ballots are going to take a while to come in and be counted. So what are we going to do? We're going to say, we're going to convince the people who follow me that that um, Democrats are going to create a bunch of ballots and mail-in ballots that they're going to like lie about and say that they're real even though they're not. And they're going to be uh, mail-in ballots and they're going to try to hide them in the fact that it's going to take a long time to receive them, right? And so he convinces almost his entire voting population that, you know, there's like this widespread voter fraud, right? And so as you see, initially he's winning um, and then as like, as the mail-in ballots continue to be counted, uh, like Biden starts to ebb closer to like actually, you know, being the person who gets voted into office. And so by that time uh, that this even happens, Trump has already convinced his voting base that this is what you would expect if there is voting fraud, like widespread voting fraud. And then what he does is he launches into like these huge, um, right? So he's like, so like this is literally eroding our democracy. Yeah, I, I don't think that there's widespread enough voting fraud to actually like come up with anything, right? So like, think about this, Trump's own court appointees threw out major cases against voter fraud because there was no evidence. And also um, Trump's own lawyer, uh, Rudy, Giuliani, Rudy, Rudy Giuliani, like repeatedly made, uh, repeatedly refused to make the case that there was actual voting fraud in the court of law. And of all of these court cases that were filed, I think only one or two of them actually like went through and like, okay, so like in Pennsylvania, you have this example of where like, okay, so like, uh, were they like the people who like, you know, vote watchers or whatever, ballot watchers or whatever, like weren't allowed to get too close and like, that's not okay. And I think that's like reasonable to, you know, say like, like, yeah, that's, you know, not constitutional as far as the state is concerned or whatever, or like it's illegal or whatever to not allow them to get within six feet or something. Yeah, so I don't actually know if I believe that some machines had error rates of 18, I mean of 84.6%, right? And if there are, like I wonder what sample size that is, right? And so like you can just pick, like you can just pick like small sample size uh, samples to like make your case or whatever. I really don't think that that's the case, right? And like, apparently none of the judges do either because like bipartisan judges, both left and right, like threw out basically all of Trump's cases and Trump could never make a real, yeah, no. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I really don't think it's, right? I mean, like by, there is bipartisan, bipartisan like, uh, not support of Trump's cases, right? And so, like, nobody believed there was actual fraud. Nobody with any kind of power actually believed there was fraud. And, like, then you have examples of, like, Trump calling into Georgia and whatever to, like, try to convince him to, like, just find votes or whatever. Like, oh, you know, the Democrats cheated, you know, just find 14,000 votes that all, that's all I need or whatever. And, um, and yeah, and then, like, then you have like Rudy Giuliani saying, you know, we have to fight like hell if we're going to keep our, you know, country or whatever. And like Trump saying, yeah, we're going to march down uh, to the U.S. Capitol, to the Capitol. You know, we're going to give him our support. Like, yeah, that's kind of like egging on violence, isn't it? This is Yeah. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure they throw out every Second Amendment case because there's pre-existing... There's pre-existing um, 
like either it's not in their either it's not in their like it's not their prerogative right or there's like pre-existing like it's a state thing or there's pre-existing precedents on like these the second amendment stuff and no like there are definitely infringements on the second amendment but like are there that many i don't think so Right, not yet, but I'm scared of uh, legislation the Democrats are going to pass as far as Second Amendment rights go, right? So that kind of sucks. But I don't think there is, like, right now. But yeah, I don't know. There's, like, uh, long story short, Trump convinces his entire voting base that there's widespread voter fraud. Um, Trump also, like, uh, sabotaged the USPS. Um, to like keep mail-in ballots from getting in on time. Uh, now we have like an incredibly divided nation. Uh, yeah, so now we have like this incredibly divided nation where like people don't actually think that, right? So like you are convinced that the, that the election was fraudulent, even though like almost all Republican judges throughout these cases, right? Right, so like Trump has like convinced you of this. Right, so I think that like arguing this Second Amendment, like California bullshit, like I mean, remember that, yeah, we divided nation. Yeah, I, yeah, not divided enough to like storm the Capitol. Right, that's like some, that's some like pretty big bullshit, right? It wasn't nearly as divided as it is now. Like, I mean, uh, like we're literally watching families getting torn apart because of this, like over political things. Yeah, no, it was Trump. It was definitely Trump. And if you don't think it was Trump, then like, I don't really know how to convince you. Like Trump has told this lie and like a lot of Republican senators at this point admit that there was no widespread voter fraud, right? So this whole thing, like there was never any voter fraud a lot of Republican senators admit there is no voter fraud. If you think there is still voter fraud, it's because, I mean, like, I don't know what to tell you. Like the, like there's just not enough evidence to support enough voter fraud claims to actually have Trump winning the election. Yeah, see, the Capitol riot we think is a joke, right? Because it kind of is, but it could it could get out of hand. Enough evidence of enough voter fraud. No, it's they won't hear the evidence because there's not evidence. There is bipartisan rejection of these court cases brought by Trump's legal team. Right, like no, no judge will actually hear these cases. Yeah, they had no evidence to to uh, they had no evidence in the first place, right? And whatever, and that's not actually true, right? So like court cases have been held over this and not dismissed. And what they end up doing is like bringing in some people who are like obviously lying, you know. Yeah, I don't like I don't really think it's that important, right? I think the important thing is that. Trump's own supporters have thrown out his court cases because there's not enough evidence to even hear them in the first place. Yeah, Republican judges who support Trump won't hear the cases.
and there are judges that have heard them and then they've just been kind of like, I don't know what the actual term is, but they've been like dismissed or whatever after the fact. It's not dismissal, but they've been ruled like, I don't know, not valid. I don't know what the, what the actual terms is, terms are. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I mean, like, um, like, this isn't my first rodeo, right? Yeah, I mean, okay, I'll look into Tim Pool. But like, um, like, is there voting fraud? Like, yeah, you know, can you go find? Oh, I know who Tim Pool is. Yeah, I just like I just don't know how to. Yeah, no, I agree with universal term limits in the government. It reduces noise. Like that's pretty reasonable. I don't know why more Democrats don't support that. But like, here's the thing. I this ain't my first rodeo. Right, like, I don't know how old you are, but like, I've been around this block a couple times at this point. And I mean, these are like, I just, I just don't know what to tell you. Like, this is not the kind of behavior we would expect if there was real voter fraud. Yeah. Cause Pelosi's a piece of shit. Yeah, I agree. Like, but this is like tangential, right? This, I mean, this is, this is like perpendicular. Like, I don't care about, like, we're talking about Trump, right? Yeah, like, fuck Nancy Pelosi. Like, what a piece of shit, right? I mean, like, what we really need in office, we need, like, what we need is, like, young newcomers in office. Yeah, no, like, um... For sure, like I have no idea why why Democrats like blocked Trump's uh, like or didn't support Trump's travel ban from China, right? And like I don't understand why Democrats want to get rid of this like this filibuster, which is like currently keeping our government some semblance of stability. And I don't know like I don't know why why Democrats you know um, don't support term limits on every government position. And I don't know why you know, but like. I don't know why Democrats don't support Second Amendment rights, and I don't know why Democrats, like, like Democrats do all this bullshit, but, like, the real thing here is that... Republicans predicted that Trump would systematically erode our democracy, and he's done it, right? Everything, everything Senator Ted Cruz said about Trump has come to pass. The issue with the government isn't right versus left, but it's the problem that we can affect the most right now. Right, in order to save somebody's life from coronavirus, you don't treat the coronavirus, you just treat the symptoms and, and hope that they can deal with it, right? Their immune system can deal with it. And that's what we have to do with our own government, right? Yeah, and I do think it's government versus people. And I think that what we really need is, I think we need like people to become in government, right? I mean, like we need, uh, we need like more younger people in government, you know, people who aren't like bought out or whatever yet, people who aren't, you know, haven't had like years of power to corrupt them.
right? Like I agree with I agree with term limits. Yeah, they do. I mean, it's like it's bullshit. Like I agree. But I mean, I don't know how I can convince you. Like the facts are the facts are like the facts don't show voter fraud. They suggest that there's some irregularities that should be looked into. Um, but like, even when you look into them, like, uh, claims of like, you know, 600 dead people voting or whatever in Arizona, and it's like, you actually look into it and there's only two or whatever. And like, um, I don't know. It... Yeah. But the thing is, is that if you don't vote for Democrats or Republicans, you can't actually expect to win, which really sucks. Right. So like, this is a problem with our, the voting system we have is a problem with the, um, like it's a problem with our like two party system. Uh, and I don't actually know how to make a good, like sure there's like, like runoff voting where you like the lowest points go to the next people and whatever, but like that can be gamed too. Yeah, but like they, they, I don't know how to convince you that there's just not Some of these irregularities are irregularities are so stupid that it would it's a waste of time to look at them, right? It's like looking at like some of these ideas is that okay? Well, yeah, no, I agree. Vote for a candidate on their party. Look, I'm not. Look, I'm mostly just shitting on Trump, right? So I think, like, in the Republican Party has like consistently flip-flopped to support Trump or whatever because the Republican Party wants to just get reelected. And like this is the this the same goes for Democrats too, right? But like if you look at if you look at what people what uh like Senator Ted Cruz and I'm really bad at names, but like if you look at what senators past senators have said about Trump before he was elected versus after he was elected versus like flip-flopping on whether they should uh like vote to confirm the impeachment or um like whether what Trump, you know, whether Trump incited violence or not or like uh, what's his name? Like Lindsey Graham is like the biggest piece of shit, right? So, and yeah, once again, there's just not enough. There's just not enough issues. Let's see, is a polarizing personality. Yeah. I mean, he's an asshole. He's an asshole. And I misinterpreted that as like, it's like speaking truth, but that's not what it is. Trump is just an asshole. And I voted for him because I thought, he wasn't, I thought he was something different. Yeah. And like, um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, asshole describes more than personality. That's for damn sure. Like, I guess final point is I don't really even need to look at, I don't need to look at evidence supporting voter fraud claims or evidence suggesting that there is maybe voter voter fraud because I have deemed already from past examples of where Trump lies and tells like non-truths or like avoids telling the truth that um, like, I don't even, I don't, yeah, there's enough evidence where I don't need to like launch into like a hundred hour personal investigation into whether these voter fraud claims are true or not. Right, like, 
Trump is a businessman. He has used simple business tactics to try to get what he wants, which is to stay president. Um, you know, at first you try to go through the normal lanes of getting what you want. And then if that doesn't work, then you uh, launch litigation, um, right? Like that's like standard business stuff. And like Trump is a businessman and like he's a pretty successful one. So I don't understand why we're interpreting these basic business litigation tactics as anything other than, you know, basic business litigation tactics, right? I mean, start litigation to try to win your case or try to win what you want, regardless of whether it's true or not. Like you see this all the time. Like there's endless lawsuits between businesses. Trump is a businessman. He's going to do businessman things, right? It's, you know, and like, nope, like courts have, you know, bipartisan rejected his cases. Rudy Giuliani can't, like has not, I don't think he's even made a claim of voter fraud in a court case. Um, the people who, you know, uh, who he's found to actually try to make a case, you know, uh, which is like state, you know, cite evidence for voter fraud have been repeatedly um, shown to either be lying or incapable of, or like lying under oath or like incapable actually like being a witness and, you know, and like this makes complete sense, right? I mean, like, I don't use Chrome. I totally forgot where I was at. Let's see, get point moment of inertia. I wonder if anybody's actually still here. It says seven. Cool. Yeah, I'll look into it. Okay, you do an 8x speed increase over what? Rewards for attention. Hmm. I don't like that. Oh, yeah, I don't like this.
I was going to do rotation. Uh, I've got to write a inverse as well. Right, we don't care about this. It should be actually the determinant, which it is. I think I did the wrong thing. Oh. No, I didn't. I did the right thing. Do I really care about this? Wow, I really don't care about this. Okay, now I get to the part that actually matters. I wish Roblox would just provide a correct inversion in the first place. 
God, I really hate using C-frames. I don't know why I'm using C-frames. Lines up nicely, though, I guess. This framework. There's no tutorials. Yeah. Oh, the alternative using C frames, making a C frame equivalent, except make it not suck. I mean, that's what I'm doing right now, right? So I'm writing a custom inverse. Um, like inverse method for C frames because the existing one doesn't do what I need it to. Yeah, something interesting is people always ask me how I learned stuff, but um, I don't really have a good answer for that. Like, I think I think people just want like a quick and easy answer to things, but the real answer is that if you're doing meaningful work, there probably isn't a path for you to follow and the real take is that it's Yeah, so resources I used, I don't use resources and I don't watch videos. Um, well, that's not true. Yeah, like the real answer is that I don't use resources and I don't watch videos for the purpose of solving my problems. Um, but I do look at resources and I do watch videos because I'm interested in them. Um, but most of what I look at is like, hmm. When I approach a problem, I don't Google the solution to the problem, right? I think, what have I seen in the past that may give way to a solution for my problem? And so 
if you're looking for like specific resources to help you out solving specific problems, I won't be able to help you at all. Um, but that doesn't mean that I don't have like an ongoing interest in like research field and AI and, you know, like old established mathematics and whatnot. Does that make sense? I know that doesn't answer your question. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I also think it's important to, uh, like explore the solution space on your own. What drove my interest in mathematics? I don't know. They're just cool. I, I don't know why I like mathematics. I don't, yeah, I don't know why I like it. Um, I could say it's because I'm good at it, right? But I don't actually know if that's true. Um, I think I'm good at it because I like it. Right, so not the other way around. I mean, it might, it might, I mean, like, it's definitely like a positive feedback loop, but I don't know what the initial thing is. I think, I think, I, I think, uh, here's actually something that kind of resonates with me. I think I don't like making decisions and Math isn't, math is about like, no, it's not that I don't like making decisions. It's I, I don't like arbitrating things. And with math, math is all about removing arbitrary things, right? So there is only one right solution in math. And getting there is a journey and it requires like a lot of, like getting there is an art, but what art, what traditional art does is it says, I want to have an effect. Hmm. Well, yeah, I don't actually, mathematics isn't art directly, but the way I use math is art. But I think, I like making things, which is art, but, um, and I can draw pretty well and I can write music. Okay, so actually I'm okay with making decisions. I'm okay with arbitrating things. Hmm. So I don't actually know. Oh, I don't need that here. I need that there. Get system delta rotation. Oh my God, I gotta implement this now.
I don't know. One of the things I definitely like about math is that, um, like the, it is easy to, I don't know, the correct solution is usually found by removing arbitrary decisions. And so when you get a right answer, it means it's really the, it's really the good one. It's really the correct one. And so, and there's like a lot of elegance and beauty in that. And like seeing how, how these pieces fit together is really cool too. But I think primarily that whenever I'm like making a game, the question is, how can I make fewer decisions? Right. And usually it's like minimize energy, <laughs> minimize energy <laughs> there. Does that help at all? Let's see. Okay, angular impulse, concentric of mass. Yeah. But also it's kind of nice when you can just, it's also, it feels good to be good at something, right? Like, so I can't think of, I can think of one person who, uh, I can think of, well, maybe I can think of one person who's better at applying mathematics to Roblox, right, than I am. Maybe. And even then it's pretty trade. Yeah, this feels good. And it's really cool to have an idea and then let it play out and then see it work well. I don't know. And mathematics seems to be one of the most powerful tools for predicting things. And like, I'm almost certain that this is gonna look good, right? Like, I mean, like I haven't tested any of this code and I've been thinking about this concept. So I've been streaming for five hours and I would talk about politics for like an hour or something. Maybe it was an hour and a half, I don't know. It was probably like an hour. And um, right, I've been thinking about this stuff for like probably 20 or 25 hours or more. And I haven't tested anything, but I know it's gonna look good. Right? Which just feels good. Get system angular impulse, boxes, the center of the boxes that we're gonna do. I know that's not a function. So let's see, what are we doing? We're getting the system. I kind of lost track after talking about politics for a while. 
And she gets some angular impulse. We're getting the center of the mass. Why are we doing that? Because we need to be able to pass the mass on. System angular impulse. We're going to write some functions. We're going to, we have like this, oh, I already have the get function up here, get um, component. Given a center, <clears throat> and I, like I'll definitely rewrite all this, but this is just for testing and concept stuff. And it and it'll be good to see this work, and then it'll it'll motivate me to keep me motivated, you know. So I have the center. Mass size and C frame. C zero C one. We've already written this code. I don't know what I'm going to call this. A. J and we get this component moment of inertia. We want to get this component angular impulse. Zero and C one. I wish there was a better way to. Um, oh, I don't want that. Oh, great. I don't know if. Whatever. Yeah, and we already came up with this formula for this. So I just need to get the components of this. Um, what the hell is this? This is some bullshit. I think this was it, right? 1 12th, okay, we have the mass times the cross product of the offset. So we want the center mass, J, system angular component, local J, just angular impulse. Right, so here we're not divided by mass, but maybe we should get the whole thing there. Except it's not useful to us. Okay, get component angular impulse. Mass size C zero C one. Yeah, we've already written this. Right here it is. Okay. I feel like I'm getting close. One of the things that I actually hate is testing things. Like uh, this is the most fun part, right? Which is doing the math. Then you have to test it. 
uh, yeah, mass over 12 times all of this. Uh, yeah, maybe I should break this up into point and local. These are not good naming conventions. I could just do return this. Actually, I can do, give me this. Yeah, give me that. Oh geez, the powers. What? Nice. This is not nice. Well, that's nice. It's the rotational part, and then we add on Okay, so now we have this, which is the, I guess, the point part, and now we need, okay, let's put this here, and oh my god, this sucks. Uh, delete, 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 delete. Why am I scared of these useless parentheses? Who needs those? A lot of people don't like the way I write math out, but they can suck it, honestly. <laughs> this is, um... Math written out by the masters, so if they don't like it, they can fuck. C return. Yeah, don't eat that. Uh, don't like how long this is. The mass. Let's see, what are people asking? What type of math am I using right now? It looks like a jumble of matrices and algebraic stuff. Um, yeah, I guess this is, well, I mean, physics is just math in a certain order that's applicable. This is like, yeah, this is matrices. So this is linear algebra and calculus.
because I had to do integrals in order to get this stuff. This is nice that this is separable. Uh, <sighs> size. Angular impulse. Uh, am I done? Alright, did I finish? Like, legitimately, did I just finish? Let's see, any plans for a second monitor? Probably useful for streaming. Um, yeah, I mean, I do have a laptop that I could use. Um, but like, uh, the primary cost of things is not their dollar cost, it is the volume that they take up. Oh, linear algebra. Yeah, linear algebra as a class is pretty cool. Um, uh, who's the one who asked me about resources? Oh. Yeah, I want to add, so mini gamut. It's not that, yeah, it's not that I don't like learn things. It's just that I don't look for solutions to my problems specifically. I just, uh, I soak up information because I'm interested in it, but um, but then I, I apply that forward later on, right, if that makes sense. Um, and so anyway, that be, the reason why I say that is because Fez, uh, this, the um, linear algebra that you learn in math class will not exactly be like immediately applicable to Roblox development. If that makes sense. You will have to 
probably struggle as I do and as people do in order to find uh, like what the important parts of the linear algebra class are to you. And so for you, the important parts might be different than the important parts for somebody else. And so for somebody else, like somebody getting a math major or something, the important bits in linear algebra would be not just knowing the operations and the meanings of the operations and getting intuitions as far as like what to predict when trying to solve problems. It's also very much, you know, like how do people in the field talk about this subject, right? And so like, um, and so the subject, you know, so like, uh, like a lot of terminology and stuff as well. And so anyway, um, like, so it probably won't go through applications of it, right? You, you'll probably see rotation matrices, but they'll probably only be two dimensional. You probably won't even get into three dimensional rotation matrices, which are a standard in game development, right? And then even further than that, using four dimensional matrices to represent, like, or not four, uh, not three. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 2D matrices, but three, three by three matrices, right? So using four by four matrices to represent rotation and position as well in like a convenient way, right? So like, I mean, it probably won't get you very far, but it'll definitely probably like the most important thing you'll get out of that class is uh, like you'll probably remember some problems that you had that you didn't know how to solve and you'll be able to solve them. And then you'll also, um, you'll also probably gain a lot of intuition and insight into like future problems, right? So be able to carry it forward. Okay, did I finish though? Wow, I really don't want to test this. So I'm going to check Discord on my phone. All right, Discord time. I need a better back posture. I'm like slumping. There. How do I sit when I run? Or how do I stand when I run? Like this. So I should I be sitting like this? Oh, I need Roblox Studio up.
<sighs> yeah, so I have been deadlifting. It would probably be better if I wasn't sitting on a stool. All right, here's where I find all my syntax errors. Oh. Okay, well, I guess I basically made no mistakes. That's cool. Let's see if this actually works or something. How do I test this? Uh, while true do. <laughs> Gonna check more Discord before I have to test things.
the sun is setting. Yeah, I think um, like most of the stuff can be figured out on your own, I think as well, though. And honestly, having a tool to assist is like really useful because you don't have to work it out on paper all the time. But uh, sometimes it's like, actually a lot of the time it's much better to work it out on paper rather than use the tool. Though I think in this case, it was better to do it on the tool. All right, let's 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 <coughs> power model. Okay, let's part. <laughs> well, M is not a valid member of part. All right, so three mistakes. Okay, nil. So no offset, moment of inertia. I'm not giving offset when I'm not giving mass. Okay, there are gonna be five mistakes. Factor three expected got C frame, get component. Wait, wait. Oh, add C frame. All right. Okay. Let's move it. Oh, delta rotation. <gasps> there should be no delta rotation. Darn it. Okay, but so it's at zero. I move it four. Delta post does not say four. Well, why is that? Okay. Let's just focus on the, because the rotation relies on the position. Okay, God, this is the part that I hate. Okay, get to some delta position. I kind of rushed this, honestly. Um, get self system delta position. Mm, get center of mass boxes. We add the masses together. Oh, <laughs> dummy. Okay, so like six mistakes. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's move it over four. Yeah, so 3.8, that's like basically four. It's basically zero. Basically negative four. Yeah, basically negative four and two. And Y works too, right? Sure does. Okay. Okay. That might be why the rotation thing wasn't working, though I would be surprised if the rotation thing worked. Oh, the sun setting. Like actually it's halfway down. <sighs> okay. 
So if I move it to the right, it should be balanced out, right? So if I do, also I should probably anchor this thing and then I should set model rotate to 45, move to like one. Uh, okay, so it's saying that I'm rotating for some reason. Right, that doesn't make any sense. Or maybe it does make sense, right? Like, but it should be balanced on both sides. All right, so that cross product should end up canceling because I'm moving with, okay, so the center of mass is there and then the center of mass is there. What about just pure rotation? Does this work? It's negative six, is that what it should be? Okay, that should say uh, negative one, but I should say like 1.57. Oh, sun's all the way set. Uh, or should it? Hold on. We're gonna write this thing, rotate this thing by one degree. Oh, shoot. Oh, you know what that looks like? That looks like 3.14. Okay, 0 0.0157. I did 90 of those. Okay, that's kind of close. Is it really that inaccurate? Hmm. Well, 577, seven. I mean, that won't make a big difference. Hmm. I'm getting asked for stock buying advice. Okay, so why isn't that working very well? That's the question. And we will just... Hmm. Where's the... Oh, cool, they added the assembly stuff. Assembly mask, what the fuck? Oh, because it's anchored, right. Okay, and then root priority. Where's the rotation? Where is it? Where's it? Where's the orientation? Okay. Is that in terms of degrees? There's your zero one six. getting closer. Okay, 
well, is it really that inaccurate? Uh, actually moving it shouldn't affect it at all. It shouldn't affect the rotation at all. Um, maybe the centers of masses are wrong. Center mass zero, center mass one, one, zero. Multiplied by mass, some position, mass. Like moving it left and right shouldn't do anything. I wonder where that's getting in, right? So, get local box, moment of inertia. We don't care about that. We care about this, right? So we have y and z minus z and y, x, z, x, z. X, Y, X, Y. Okay, so that's all looks good. Mm. Okay, but like uh, the only place where this stuff's getting in is right here. So. Oh my God, Roblox. Okay, so I'm wondering about this, right? So, oh, my dumb ass, holy crap. <laughs> okay, yeah, that would be why. Zero point one five six eight. Yep, that's almost zero point one five seven. And of course, if we do this, it like it'll get inaccurate, right? So it's saying. Right, so it's like assuming that all the mass in this thing is translating linearly from one place to the other, even though that's not the case. Right. I mean, we could do something about that. If I move this around, please, dear God. Don't change it. <gasps> yes, it works. And so like we maybe maybe instead of doing that specific like integral that's simplified, I should have just done the normal uh, like moment of inertia stuff. Right, this thing over here. So we need this, right? Which we have right here. 
And then we need this part. And right now we're combining these together and we have that right here. So I could get, yeah, I mean, I could just go in here and get the moment of inertia. Like, we can just test this real quick. I, I like this solution, though, because it's nice and simple. But if we're going to have to get the moments of inertias anyway, then, I mean, hmm. Oh, my God. Stop auto-formatting it badly. Thank you. So I'm going to check. Uh... Okay, so we're gonna keep this. Oh, right, I can't middle click. Also, before I lose all this work, time to copy this over. Uh, the um, okay, That's fine. Okay, local i uh, r equals this, I guess. Transforming it by that, I'll just deck like, whatever. Then I can do it's the object moment of inertia, which is this. Now I just need to get the axis angle. So um, C0 inverse MC1. Now I just need to get the axis angle. Oh, right, Roblox has a thing. rewrite this every time. I think I can just return. Right. Right, and we don't even want to transform this. We just want to do our times local i times. Let's see. So
instead of doing that, I should just do the these, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, like. Okay, it says 1.418, and I don't know why it says 1.418. That should say a full. Interesting. Okay, is live stream saying anything? I guess not. Okay. I see, I don't even know if this is updating or not, right? I mean, there could be people talking and I have no idea. Um, okay, so why isn't it reading pi over two? Right, that's the question. Unless this needs to be zero. No, same thing. Uh, and this should be multiplied by mass. If I rotate it 90 degrees, okay, 14.66, mm, what? Oh, right, I'm printing A, right, let's print A, and then we will I mean, it's printed, it's 1.5707, which is pi over two, which is exactly what we expect. Um, if we set the mass down, okay, it's 1.57, delta rotation 1.238, Wow, I hate debugging. Let's see if the chat's saying anything. Nope. Um.
I mean, that's unit. I mean, it's like identity uh, position. This should only affect the rotation. Okay. Um, I mean, that takes mass and it takes size. And we're doing get local box moment of inertia and we're. All right, we're doing system angular impulse. And this should be the same. That should be zero. I don't think there's anybody who actually likes debugging so I'll find a game so you actually have to make it work. Yeah, right. I think there was a reasonable chance that I could have written this and then had it just work the first try after fixing some um, syntax errors and basic mistakes, but this seems like I don't know. I mean, like this, sh what did I change? Right, printing point I. Yeah, that should be zero and it should still say zero and it does still say zero. And whenever I invert, so here's the real question, right? So this is in local space. I multiply the local moment of inertia by the local space angular change. Then I convert it into global space multiplying by the rotation. And then here, All right, so here's the real question. So when I take this local box moment of inertia, and I do transform local i by r, like whatever, we don't care, like whatever. And then I do print lol uh, c frame and for c frame. And then I give lol, so then I multiply by lol. This should be identity. Yeah, and that is identity. Like, look at that, that's...
I mean, it's identity enough. Right, is this just basic? Oh, it probably is basic as fuck. Yeah, it is. What if I rotate this? Uh... What? Oh, wait, local I transform, yeah. The rotation, C0 to rotation times the local moment of inertia. We print this out. Our times items are inverse. Makes sense. You know, what if, right? I don't know why, but like, what if? Nope. Okay, actually, why? So whenever I transform it by the rotation, But that shouldn't change anything. I mean, it, like it will print out differently now. Okay, zero 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 one zero 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 one zero 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 one. Zero 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 one zero 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 one zero 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 one. What if this is actually just correct, right? Hmm. Three, ten, and eight. It's a uh, curse time. Hmm. 
wonder what anybody said in the chat. Nothing. Okay. <sighs> like, yeah, I'm transforming it, I'm transforming this local thing, given the mass and the size. C1. Wait a second. What, what, where is it getting stuff from? Is it point I? Okay, no. Okay, did I mess something up? No. Um. Okay, wait, where's this happening? Where's this happening? Are there multiple parts in here? There are multiple parts in there. Never mind, it works. Position X components, Y components, Z components. Okay. Yep. Yep. Ha <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I forgot that cframe.new returns ones in there. Doesn't just return zeros. Don't know why I forgot that. I should have remembered it. Uh, yeah, it'll work now. Yep, pi over two. Three point one four one five nine two seven. Whatever. Same difference. Okay. Let's see if it works on this. Yeah, so I think I have this. Yeah, 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 first try, first try. I mean, like, none of the really complicated stuff was messed up. It was like the simple bullshit as usual. This should say, uh, like, pi over two, I mean, four. Yeah, okay, pi over four. Interesting. I wouldn't have been exactly surprised if there was anything in the Y or Z components. Okay, this should, Rotate about the Z axis. There it is, there it is. Interesting. Will this divide by zero? Nope. Cool. I mean, I, 
shit, I guess it works, right? I mean, I mean, like, cool. I mean, I wonder if I should, instead of doing this thing, if I should convert back to this thing. Or is it just, where it just assumes completely linear movement of all the mass in the thing? Right? I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Right? Let me copy this over before I lose it. Cool. Easy. Probably messing up my formatting or something. Whatever. Okay. Cool. Okay, now, yeah, cool. Now, I mean, this just tells me how much I've rotated the system. Even if I deform it. <laughs> this much effort just to ask, just to figure out how much it's been rotated. God damn. I should uh, probably like make a clone of it and show what it looks like unrotated. So delta rotation is currently returned in terms of an axis angle, but that should probably just be in terms of like a like a rotation, like a C frame, and then I can like keep track of it over time. I don't know, like, I don't know, how am I gonna, how am I gonna, like, <laughs> like, look at this, right? So, I kinda wanna see it actually do things other than to just print out numbers. And so I guess what I could do, I'm mean, gonna have to, I have to make a duplicate, duplicate model. Um, and then I have to link it one to one. So I guess I'll have to do that inside of this code here. I'm mean, actually no, because I have the boxes. And so I can just do uh, local copy equals whatever uh right
that I don't actually need that. And I'll just do Okay, we want to subtract the delta position from this thing. So we do look at the part C frame minus delta position. We need to get the center of mass. Right, so we need to do center of mass, so we'll just do this, right? And we'll just, um, part dot C frame minus center. We'll apply the delta rotation, so. dollars oh my gosh Is that a movie stock I am see a movie stock that'd be light Delta orientation XD um, fuck I don't care about this code Oh. Hey, it works. Or does it? No, that's the wrong way. Right, I need it. And if I, okay, yeah, if I move this, yeah, so staying the same place. So I'm subtracting the delta post. I need to be doing negative delta rotation.
Yeah, so if the upper torso looks to the left, the lower torso should look to the right. Whoa. Cool, and if I move this around, just stay in the same place, and if I do this, uh, move it. Oh, wait, <gasps> what? Oh, I understand. I understand why. Because it's not taking the correct um, path, right? It's doing it as a straight line. But if I kept track of this, uh, I'm going to check messages real quick. Also, my phone's probably going to die real soon. Yeah, okay, because this just gets the instantaneous change between the two. So if what I did is instead, yeah, I kept track of this thing. So right, so here's what we do, right? And then we'd have to do uh, like some posts. Um, right, and then I do something like uh, Yeah, I still need that to apply the rotation and then some Post equals some post plus delta post rot. Uh, and this is like technically not right. I need to actually be multiplying this, but on a single axis, it should work. Okay, vector three expected gut number. Delta post. Oh, duh. Okay, let's try this, yeah. There it goes. Oh, that's the wrong way. Okay. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like this. 
<laughs> this feels pretty cool. Okay, let's move this up here. I'll move, uh, let's uh, move that up there like that. And then let's go ahead and run this. Okay, video time, video time. Okay. Yeah, I kind of need a second monitor, right? <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm still live. The furry messaging app. Yeah, I saw Telegram's also. Yeah, right. Okay, teach you. I don't know. It took a lot of work. <laughs> like, um, you could probably go back through the stream and figure it out. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, you know what's really, okay, here's what's gonna happen though. I'm gonna rotate it this way and weird stuff is gonna happen. Are you ready? You see why that's, see how that's wrong? Here's the reason why. It's because um, I'm adding axis angles together, right? And so what I really need to be doing is um yeah 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 so what i what i actually need to be doing is saying okay access angle to c frame this okay some rotation actually needs to be a c frame some rot needs to be some rot times delta delta rot times some rot and then uh, instead of uh, instead of uh, this, it needs to be x angle to C frame of the delta rotation like this. And then I need to do this inverse times that. Excuse me. Okay, and now please do God let this work. Yep, it works still. Now when I go around in a circle. And now when I do this, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I feel pretty good right now. <laughs> I feel I feel quite good right now. All right, and now the idea is that um, we want to make this thing smoothly approach the target, right? And so we want to move these towards zero. And so what we can do is we can each step, we can say 
like do some like let's just do something stupid, right? Some posts equals some post times like zero point nine or something. I don't know how quickly that'll get there. Like zero point nine nine. I don't know. That's one percent and then one percent. So that's after thirty seconds. Oh, hold on. Let's see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Let's see. Um, I don't know. I just had a good time with math, and then it happened. Let's see. So this is some bullshit, right? So, but that's okay. So it just equals lerp. We just, right? I mean, this will be fine. Like, we're just going to make it converge on zero. So we're just going to rotate this. Right, and so that's converging back, so. Make it a little bit faster, right? It's five times faster or something. No. Oh my God, get over. Yes. Here, and what happens if we make this go up? <laughs> okay. What about this? It's very hard to get that to do anything. Okay, what if I scale it? Oh, right. Oh my God. Yeah, taking character animation is the next step. Again, 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 again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess I'll just apply this to the whole character or something. Yeah, just minimize energy, right? I need to make this uh, thing like run faster now though. I don't know how, I, how did I get it to go one stud to the right? Like how the, how did I do that? Yeah, I don't know, I'm pretty pleased, yeah. Okay, so the next step, I need to make a system on top of this that can uh, like try to continuously like get the rotation to its goal. Right, so there's like 
several solutions. One of them is you do it in axis angle and get some weird stuff, or you can do it with quaternions. <laughs> Any idea for ETA core? I don't know, like maybe summer. Yeah, so this is pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like, I mean, it looks great, right? Um, like, it just looks fantastic, right? So I kind of don't really want to work on other things anymore. If I wrote this, rotate this whole thing. Yeah, I mean, it just, it, I don't know, it just looks fantastic, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I need to reprogram all this now, but. Because, um, see, yeah, I should probably just turn it into a quaternion and then have the quaternion figure out which is the more minimal energy path. but I don't really know how to do that. So what I might end up doing is just turning this into an axis angle. Which is more linearizable. Or I could just treat the quaternion space. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I could just treat it in quaternion space, which is quite linear unless it's rotating quickly, but it probably won't rotate that quickly. So, um, so uh, I mean, yeah, and let's see. Uh, how do you make, how do you pick between, oh, let's see, what is the, how do you define least energy path? I guess that would be the least like the path, or maybe instead, the path of least acceleration. Hmm. Is that also the energy minimized path? Okay, let's just try it. D solve f double prime of t equals, let's try it with just like a basic one. So um, k squared or s squared, I guess, 
Uh, no, 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 no. Target. Or, I don't know, G for goal. Minus F of T. Minus 2 F prime of T with respect to F. Okay, yeah, sorry. Solve for T, F of T with respect to T. Right, and then actually, if we take the double derivative of this, right, okay, that's pretty reasonable. And then we square it, right, add the other components together. So wait, dot this with itself. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So this, I'll turn, hold it, I'll just do C1 and C2. That way I can work with it easier. C1 and C2. And then we're actually going to square this. Cool, and now we have c1.c1, which I'll actually just write as c1c1, c1c2, c2c2, c1c2, c2c2, 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 c2c2. Cool, and that's the acceleration squared with respect to t to infinity. cute. Okay. I like that. I like that. Wait, where the fuck did G go? Oh, it didn't matter? Oh, yes, it did, because C1 and C2 depend on G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that makes that makes sense. So we just compute, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so we just compute C1 and C2 with respect to G, and then we plug this into this uh, this energy formula. All right, let's try something more complicated. All right, so S squared, oops, S squared. And do we actually need that term? It's actually just going to uniformly increase it, so we don't need it. We do minus uh, 2 times damping. And then we get this nice little thing. And then we take the derivative twice. D of this with respect to T twice. And then we... Okay, I'm seeing some squared stuff, which is kind of nice. I prefer if it weren't squared, but it's better than like more square rooty things. So, I mean, obviously, that's not what we get. So, expand. Okay, C1 and C2. Okay. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so... Uh, we'll just say this goes to C1, C1. We'll say this... C1, C2 goes to C1, C2, and we'll say C2 squared goes to C2, C2. Now we have it in this format, which is nice. So now we just like simplify this thing, and then hopefully that gets better. Oh, right, and these are all constants anyway. Okay, so all we really need to care about is that, okay, and the, it's just e to the power of something times t. And so we just, yeah, so this is easy mode, integral. Integral is easy. Uh, with respect to t from 0 to infinity. Look. Nope. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. I mean, I know that the, ex the acceleration squared is 0 at infinity. So really, I just need to evaluate the integral at t 
equals zero. Okay, if the real value of this is less than that, it's probably saying, let's try giving d equals like negative one or something. Okay. Wait, oh yeah, 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 okay. Um, hold on a second. Okay, there we go. And then, yeah, so with that case, okay, so D is positive, right? What about negative one? Yeah, so just a D is positive. Right, and this is just, um, okay, so what if like, Okay, so we get eyes. Cool, that's pretty cool. This is pretty cool. I'm feeling good about this. Yeah. So what we could do is uh, like determine where the goals should be. Okay. So a quaternion has like two goals, right? Or I mean like a quaternion like has double stuff. Right. So here's a quaternion. Oops. And so this is identity rotation. This is also identity rotation, I mean, in 3D space. And so if the quaternion is over here going like this really fast, it might make sense to have it target this one over here instead of this one over here, right? And so, I mean, that's kind of nice, right? So like, it's not perfect, but like, it's definitely better than nothing because we could just always target this one. But I think that wouldn't make sense, especially if we're, like if we're already moving towards that one, right? And so what we do is we'd say, well, I mean, I like actually this would look more like this, right? So it's not perfect, but in this case it would look, so in this case it would be better for it to shoot for this target instead of this one, because this one is higher, higher, uh, um, higher acceleration, right? So, um, So this one, this one would be acceleration minimized. And actually what we would probably do instead is say, instead of shooting this one, we just flip over here and look at this solution and then look at that solution. Okay, cool. Okay, let's try to make this more usable then. Am I actually doing that? Am I actually, I really actually don't wanna do this, but I guess I'm, doing it anyway. Uh, and uh, what are we saying, right? So we have the, the goal and we say that f of zero equals, okay, Twitter, what's going on? My phone's gonna like die pretty soon. Uh, so that equals P zero and F prime of zero equals V zero. Mm, okay. <laughs> okay, well here we have 
d squared minus one. So this assumes that it is that d is greater than zero. Uh, okay. I really wish it would be easier to select between the different solutions, like complex and imaginary solutions. Am I going to go outside? What the hell are you talking about? I need to get my charger. So this is probably not that hard. I guess, I mean, I mean, like whatever, and then I could just take this and then, uh, uh, it's always such a pain in the ass to like get three different solutions, but like, um, but the other solutions must be some kind of like they're real, right? So it must be some kind of like phase offsetted sinusoidal thing times, you know, e to the power of right. So if we set d to like one over two or something, we get this. And then e to the power of that times t. So e to the power um, Okay, so like what is this again? So uh, so we subtract and then so that's just times e to the power of this times t. Right? Yeah, I don't go outside. I mean, I do go outside. Let's take a hop off now. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good night. Um, yeah, so like this is the same thing, right? We can verify that by just looking at it. And e to the, well, this would be purely imaginary, right? If d, right? So, so the i times t, so this becomes i, and then we swap the sign, and then we do times t, and. this becomes the opposite, right? So this we expand to t goes here, and then we say times e to the power of this, and that was a plus sign between, right? And then we say i times one minus d squared times t. And so now we essentially have it split up into this times times C1 plus this times C2 or something. It doesn't matter. Okay, plus G, I guess, full. Um, I 
yeah, so that's pretty reasonable looking. And of course this uh, can be combined. And now this actually, this, um, okay, we have e to the negative plus e to the positive. So uh, the imaginary and non-imaginary parts of this mm, need to like cancel out or something. So this would be, <sighs> right, and then this would be, Cool, and then we can actually, because we multiply by C1 and C2, that can like offset stuff. All right, so let's do, oh, whoops. We can just multiply this by C1 real plus I C1 uh, imaginary. Right, and we'll do the same thing for this here. Right, we can expand this, so. And now we get these solutions, and we don't, we just want to add these together. Right, so we'll do this one plus this one. And we get this. And we actually don't want anything complex in here, so we'll just get rid of these. And now we have our equation down to this. And um, these can be anything, so we'll just call this one C1 and C2. I mean, or not, right? I mean, maybe uh, let's let's try attacking it like that. I've never actually really done it this way before. And so we want to say that the when t is zero, right? Something, and then we want to know when the derivative of this at t equals zero is something. So this should equal All right, and then maybe we could even like say. Well, I mean, whatever, it doesn't matter, right? Let's just do C1 and C2. Yeah, so this, we want this to equal, this is the position. Uh, when t equals zero, we want it to equal p zero. And this, this is the velocity when t equals zero, and we want this to equal v zero. So solve for c1 and c2. Yeah, so that's pretty good. Um, yeah. Like, what is this? So we're just talking about lol. Okay. Uh, yeah. What do y'all think? Anything?
So I have solutions for C1 and C2. We can go ahead and plug these in. Right, so now we have this. And I just want to double check, right? So P0. Perfect. Respect the two twice. Perfect. Gravity minus, or goal minus position minus two damping times V0. But if I collect this in terms of goal, position zero, and position, or and V zero. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. What? Oh shit, did I lose everything? Oh great, okay, whatever. Kernel crashed, that's fine. Uh. Okay, so here's what we actually want. We just want to compile everything in terms of C, but we still have G to care about anyway. Um, I mean, here's the thing though. So we don't need to collect this in terms of that. We can probably just square the acceleration and then integrate that in with respect to uh, T. Right, it's like with respect to T anyway. So, oh, that was my phone. Cool. Well, time to not put it there anymore. This is the squared, and then we integrate it with respect to t, and then we set t um, so dot t goes to infinity. I mean, this will actually not want to work, right? So we're gonna have to limit it. So limit, right? Limit, comma t goes to infinity, and it'll say zero. Yeah. If condition, if you just ask condition. And then, um, okay, Wall Street bets something or other. Okay, so it should be zero, and then if t goes to the current time, which is zero, this should be in. Uh, oh, this is already integrated, yes. It should be linear. Okay, so this should be the neg negative. Uh, let's see, one minus t zero. So whatever this is, this should be. Just make sure I did integrate 
I did integrate this squared and I took this value and I threw it into here. Wait a second, Wall Street bets. Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? This is this is not okay. What is GameStop doing? They're not doing anything. The stock market is going to crash soon. This is a uh, ridiculous. I wonder. Oh, XT. Well, my investment is doing pretty well. Why would you buy in the morning? <laughs> the stock market is fucked. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Christ. Uh, infinity. Okay. Yeah, okay. And if the goal is 10, then it should be 0. And it should also be 50 here. And if the velocity towards it is like 10 or something. Okay, so about 5. Maybe that minimizes it. Yeah, okay, so 5 minimizes it. Of course, it's parabolic. That's pretty cool.
yeah, V0 squared, there it is. Um, okay, so now we do P0 squared goes to, well, I mean, Um, G squared, this would be easier to write out here, I think. Uh, oh, dumbass, dumbass. I don't even know what I was writing. I said G, yeah, I don't know, G is a thing. Yeah, G, P0, and P0. Okay, P1 is... Oh, fuck, it's not P1. Though. So probably G should have gone first, right? <laughs> Pog. Okay, so G goes first. P goes first. G goes first. I see it just goes down an extra line. Okay. Okay. I think that's not energy actually, that's the integral of the acceleration squared. Um, and we don't need to divide by 4D here, right? So let's get rid of that. We don't need to multiply by this. And this is an addition, so we can just do that. And then times Okay, that's two times that and then four times D and I'm actually gonna change G the P one into P one roll.
Yeah, 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 yeah. This is good. This looks good. And this is just the difference between P1 and P0 dotted with each other. And this is, I don't know what this is. This is like the difference between. Okay, so this is P1 minus P0 dotted with V0 and then subtract. And then um, just make sure I don't screw this up. This is original. And then that's good. Okay, this doesn't work for positive D's, I don't think. And so I'll need to do that real quick as well. Is the chat saying anything? Yeah, I suburb for big hedge funds, yeah. Um, okay, so this was the original one. And so this is the correct thing. And then actually, this is pretty simple, right? So we're gonna call GP1 instead. And then, uh, so we wanna say this zero and we want to say when the derivative goes to zero as well and so with respect to t and then we say oops we say this equals p zero and this equals p one though this could probably be simplified a little bit i mean it doesn't matter same way either way and then we solve for Solve for these and we get this. Simplify. Not simpler. And I guess then we take the second derivative with respect to this, square it, integrate. Uh, with respect to t, let's limit and see what this is. I mean, this should be zero. Yeah, okay. Um, right, and actually, before we do this, let's Let's throw C1 and C2 in there. Right, and then uh, let's... Right, and then, yeah. Then we'll take the second derivative, square the second derivative. Great. Okay, uh, let's simplify this. Whoops. Yeah, it would probably be better to work with it in terms of the C1 and C2, I think. Because like this is kind of complicated, right? Okay, so we'll go back to that then. Yeah, okay, and then, so we have these nice little terms here. So that's zero, so that means we just need to limit t to zero. I wanna get rid of this.
the stock market is so fucked. It is so fucked. I already forgot what it was doing. I guess limiting this thing. Yeah, limiting this thing to zero. The stock market's so fucked. Holy cow. Yeah, okay, that's not simpler. And actually, I like this form better. I think what I'm gonna do is go back up here and redo the first one. Because we can compute C1 and C2, right? So there they are. So here we are. And I'm going to open up a new one of these. Okay, big. Big is good. Yeah, and this is P1, the goal, and we got C1 and C2. Yeah, I'm thinking about dumping all my stocks, TBH. Let's see. Oh, hey, what's up, Chad? Yeah. Um, Chad, did you uh, want help with stuff? Because I, I see you. That would go to cook dinner, the four components, the frame P. Four components, vector threes. I was wondering if it's possible to convert vector three into a degree number. Yeah, so with respect to what? Okay, well, I was going to... Yeah, so you want to convert x into a degree number but i don't know yeah i just don't know what you're asking for right so you have yeah i mean i'm, I'm not going to explain this at this point Let's see what is adrian talking about actually should i do this oh cool Yeah. Also, I'm like pretty deep in this thought. Right, uh, derivative, double derivative, double derivative with respect to t twice, and then, okay. Um, and then we square, and then we say integrate with respect to t. And then we say t limit And see if that equals zero. Please check out if that equals zero. Cool. Let me do t goes to zero, and then we get this nice thing. C1, C2, C2. C1, C2. And these are all nicely separated.
Yeah, the stock market is giving me some crazy vibes right now. Get super chat working? Oh. Okay, yeah, I can figure out super chat. That'd be cool. Okay. C1, C2, 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 C1, 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 C1. I think I've gotten all those. Simplify. Let's try. And this should be negated, actually. And then. Um, cool. Thank you. Yeah, and so this is what we have. That's actually kind of nice like that, because now we got this square root of one minus d squared, but that kind of goes away. You got this d to the fourth power, huh? Weird. Okay, well, I guess I like this one better. Uh, but I'll keep this anyway. Right, it's the same one. It is. And so this is integral of acceleration, okay, under, uh, under, under damped. Um, over damped. Okay, but but what is C C1 and C2 again. Well, let's see. They are quite simple. Uh, I need the other one. What is C1 and C2? C2, C2, C2. Uh, okay, that's for the other one. So I see that C2 divided by would cancel out with this square root of one minus D squared. And then all the other places where the C2 are, they probably cancel out with this. And then this would be, well, let's see, C1 is just G minus P0. So this would still be a thing. Hmm, why do we have D to the fourth in there with C1 squared? C1 squared. Maybe it cancels out with more things. All right, so let's just try replacing real quick. All right, let's just make sure this is correct. Oh. Okay, these don't actually have to be separate. So that looks pretty similar, right? So we got the V zero squared and then we, right? So one times V zero squared and then divided by four D. Yep, V zero squared divided by four D. K 
Okay, and the other one was just ugly as fuck. Underdamped one. Okay, for the overdamped one, it's this. Oh. Hmm. Okay, what if we did this instead? Yeah. Oh, I should check the chat. Check the chat. Anything? No. Okay. Let's see. So we have P1, we have C1 times cosine of this. We can go ahead and change this into an H. Maybe, uh, like it'll, maybe whenever we go to do this, it'll be able to see patterns better. Okay, maybe not. Oh, that's kind of nice, though. I wonder if it'll find something here, a nice pattern. Okay, so. Oops. I mean, this is stupid, right? This is over, over constrained. Let's see, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Makes sense. Hmm. There's a five in there. That's weird. All right, I guess I'll I'll look back at this later. I'm getting kind of bored. Yeah, well, I still hate all this code though. And I, this is not pretty to me. I don't like that the overdamped one has to look this way. Right, and the underdamped one gets kind of ugly when you do it this way. Right, and so here. Positive. This will be positive. Well, will it be positive? Yeah, it will be positive. I mean, this it might be. It might need to be negated, right? So if we limit, what if we do this? Right, wrong, wrong one. Okay. And then we just copied this into here, right? And again, we just copied this into here, right? All right, and this actually needs to be negated. All right, so that would guarantee it's positive. So that needs to be plus, that needs to be plus, that needs to be plus. This one have to be so pretty like this. And then this one's just ugly. Huh. I mean, huh?
big deal. Please just be pretty. <sighs> Why is there a five here? Why is there a three here? What's even happening? Is you sleepy? Um, I don't know, not really actually. Here's the thing, right? I mean, like, I don't know what's happening. Why does it look so ugly? Why is there a five in here? What is this five doing? Why does this five have any right to be in here? That should be a four and it should cancel out with things or something, right? See what I mean though? Like, why is it ugly? It's ugly. Why is it ugly? PH, that's H squared. This one should be D squared. Should be times d squared. Why? What the fuck is there a five here? What is this? Yeah, of course I am. When I, bro, when I go, I go. This one's really pretty. All the H's go away. This one's relatively pretty too, right? Like this stuff kind of goes away. Left with a bunch of like weird looking stuff, like D plus H cubed and stuff like that, but.
and critically damped is like beautiful. All right, let's see. Uh, like what? What is this? So that is underdamped. This will be overdamped. Okay, D plus H. We got C1. I'm just going to rename it. Okay, C1, C2. All right, and there we go. C2, C2, C1, C1. C1, C1. Yeah, there we go. It's just mm. Wow, it's so ugly. Oh, and I hate all this code too. All right, I think I'm gonna call it for now. Yeah, I'm just losing interest. Yeah. 
Also, I should probably eat something too. All right, yeah, I'm gonna call it. See ya. Thank you for coming by. I will stop streaming.